Welcome, humble adventurers, to the second uh, day of our, or the second session of our campaign. As you all recall, clearly, of the previous adventure, you all were assigned by the merchants of your caravan that you were escorting to uh, reacquire their goods from a, camp a small encampment of goblins, which you most expertly and efficiently de uh, departed. Which, uh, mad praise to uh, each of you for the proper eviscerations. I do gotta say it was fun hearing your descriptions of uh, how, uh, in particular, two of you uh, dispatched these foes. That was fun. I think you mean their descriptions. Their. I, I, did, I cast Fog Cloud, and I think I used the help action during the fight. Hey, you're the I support mage. I shot a couple mage. fireballs. And was waiting for my turn to uh, incinerate some meat bags with my flamethrower, but never got the chance, sadly. Sadly, yes. Unfortunately. All right. So as we recall from last time as well, uh, you we uh, cut off the session right at, before you guys had a chance to loot any items. Just to recap, uh, out of the the only sheds you guys have checked properly uh, is both this one and this one. So. You still haven't checked these two, and you haven't gone into the proper mill to see if there's anything in there that you wanted to check out. Uh, and But as of the loot you are aware of, there are a couple barrel heads here from the barrels of items that were contained for the merchants, and a sack of goods as well. This is what you identified so far. So what would you, the humble adventurers, like to do first? Going into the mill. All right. All right. I'm gonna stealth in there too. You're gonna stealth. Uh, okay, so yes. Keegan is going to stealth in the middle. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Yay. Yay. Oops, I forgot to pull the bolt. Alright, good. So, obviously, 27 is a uh, success. So, you are in the middle. Uh, is any before. Uh, before I do anything with that, uh, is anyone just going to follow him, or are you guys going to check the sheds? Alright, uh, well, I'm just going to check the shed I'm closest to, if, uh... Okay. <clears throat> so, you're right here. So, the closest one is the one that's already been searched, but do you want to check, like, the items? Um, yeah, I'll check the, the bag with the items, so... Alright. So... I have to roll for investigation or roll for perception or anything, or just search? Nah, 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 nah. You, you just... It's just a regular search, uh... So when you open up the sack uh, full of loot in the corner, you notice that it's basically just uh, whatever the goblins thought to like throw in there. They it wasn't it's not very organized. It's not very uh, <clears throat> it's not very clear everything that's in there. But as you lay it out on the floor, you can clearly start to make out like the uh, the divvy up of items that there are for loot. Uh, in that bag, you find a total of seventy five gold, fifty silver, eighty copper. And you also find a wooden shield, uh, and not uh, and what as for what is not in the bag that's also in the shed though in that corner is uh, a pair of leather armor that was leaning against the wall, and some clubs, uh, a maul, a couple short bows, just uh, and arrows, just an assortment of weapons and stuff they'd stashed there. <clears throat> So, All right, so I just let, I lay out the loot, set it aside for later when we decide to divvy up the, the right. gold. So you're gonna you're gonna leave the stash there. Yeah, so I, I I I pull it out, but I lay it out in a nice neat row for everyone else once we divvy up everything else. I'm gonna also gonna loot the corpse of the dead goblin. All right. That's in there. Um, what you find on the dead goblin is probably a couple bit of silver he had in just a little you know, a little sack he had tied to his belt and a club. Right. How much silver did he have on him? Uh, about two, three pieces. Basically, change. Right, I'll just pocket that for myself then. Right. Up. I'm pulling it off of the corpse. And let's see, and I've already gone through the barrels over in the corner, right? Uh, you have not. All right, um, I'll go and look in there, and then anyone else who wants to do anything else can go. All right. Uh, so at the barrels, uh, you go to the barrels. 
Uh, you put, uh, you notice that the barrel heads are on the side, and the one or two barrels that are there that were opened up, you see a black powdery substance. It's got a, it's got a sulfury smell to it. Uh, do you want to roll? Uh, I roll. F- well, what stat would that be? Hold on. It would either be in probably investigation. Let's could be Arcana. I'd no, say that's magic. I'd say investigate. We'll go investigation. Roll investigation on that one. Fifteen plus that'd be twenty. Nat twenty. All right, Nat twenty. Nice. All right, so you know full well what this is. This is black powder. This is explosive powder. Uh, it's not. It's usually used as far as you're aware in fireworks or minor tricks, but you usually don't see it in large stockpiles in like a full blown uh, like a, a cask barrel. So it's very odd to see so much of it, and you can tell it's a little bit more pure. And then normal black powder mixtures, again, used in fireworks, sparklers, and other uh, f- uh, more pastime entertainment materials. So you're very, f- uh, you're very familiar with its common usages, but you, uh, you do note the oddity of, again, it, not only its purity, but the quantity that is there. And is this one of the barrels that was taken from the, uh, the wagons, the... the- as far as you can tell, there are no markings on the barrel, on this particular barrel or the other, that do match up with the caravan. So as far, uh, so it appears by all, uh, by all standards, it is not uh, looted from your, uh, <coughs> your charge, the escorted caravan. It is a separate looted item the goblins acquired. As best as you can tell, of course. How big is this barrel? Uh, like I said, it's like a cask. Um, I'd say, uh, from the ground up, it's about three feet in height, and width, it's uh, got a diameter of I'd say about a, f- a foot and a half. All right, so I'll just slap the lid on that and put it aside because I'm going to attempt to keep that All right. for later. All right. <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a big boy and I can carry things right. so that's that uh, shed checked want to check the other two or do you want to follow uh, Kiko into the mill I'll let whoever someone else to search something else if they want to right. I'm Hi. busy getting this barrel keep in mind you're not, uh, you're not an initiative right now so any of you can move however you want it's not like turns or anything yeah, so I will uh, take a look at the, the shed that's um, to the right of my current position. Do you mean here? Nope, uh, the, the next one up, because oh, okay, you had already yeah, Keep in mind, I'm, I'm facing this direction, searched. so my north is, I guess, what you guys would see is right. right so, so you, you probably put like a, we could put like a little northwest east south thing on maps just to kind of orient sometimes i don't know if that would help uh, I, uh, I always mix up east and west is east is right e- east is a, is on your right we, okay w e gotcha all right a little, little compass there. I know it's obscured a little bit, but yeah. All right. So you, uh, you Landrin, enter this little shed. Um, now in it you see a small. Uh, well, obviously the corpse. Yeah. And you also see a small desk right here. It's just got an assortment of things on it. It's got one short bow and a couple arrows. But you also know a stack of papers, oddly organized for a goblin for goblins. Uh, but they are uh, they are there. Uh, do you want to check that out? Or oh yes, I would in fact very much like to check this out. I would like to expend a spell slot to cast detect magic. All right. <clears throat> so you you do want to do that? Just double checking, right? Yes, I'm doing both. I'm casting detect magic. You know, look on both sides of the paper in case there's any sort of illusory script or whatnot. And I'll start reading all the paperwork. All right. <clears throat> um, as far as your detection of magic, 
you do detect a minor hint of uh, arc uh, arcanic energy uh, on the not only in the shed but in the whole camp as a whole. But as for the papers specifically, it doesn't appear that any of them are enchanted or uh, cursed or uh, well affected by spellcraft in any in any particular way. Um, as you read through, you notice that these documents are deeds or a or basically like pro are, are like well deeds the only term I usually use. Uh, they're, they're proof of ownership of property in Northholm, which is the capital city of Nordric or Nordred, sorry. That's concerning. Yeah. Uh, on this particular document, you notice that each of the deeds, uh, have an assortment of names, but you, the two that stand out to you in particular are Nova Rin and Argo del Corvo, which are the two merchants you have come across so far. Uh, this is the deeds that they own that were in their uh, carriages when you were back at the camp. Oh, well, these are definitely important. Yeah. <clears throat> It'd be a shame if they never got them back. That would be a shame. Landrin, yeah, Landrin is going to start putting them into his little... Uh, I guess he has a pouch for components and whatnot. Yeah, he's going to start squirreling those away. All right. <clears throat> so you take the deeds? Yes. These will be, need to either be returned or uh, dealt with properly. All right. So those are in your inventory. Let me note that. All right. Um, <clears throat> amongst the deeds, there is one last thing. One one of the papers that wasn't a deed was a letter uh, addressed. Uh, did you uh, want to read it? It was in a uh, envelope. Is it? Is the envelope still sealed? It is, with a wax okay, seal. Do I recognize the seal? Roll me investigation. Uh, da, 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 da. Sixteen. I finally rolled above a ten. You oh, twelve. You find that the symbol is familiar. It's uh, it's a two cross swords with a tree in the in, in uh in the background of this of the seal. So two cross swords shaped like uh, more like scimitars than like standard like short swords with a tree in the background of the symbol. So you are familiar uh, with the symbol. You know it's not native to the country, uh, to the nation of Nordred. Uh, you are more familiar familiar uh, of it from little writings here and there from your former uh, master uh, <clears throat> or magic teacher, because uh, he had a few papers that also included similar symbols. Uh, and you are aware that it is belongs to one of the coastal islands. Uh, more to the south of the uh, of the world, as opposed to the northern region of the world, which is mainly occupied by the continent on which Nordred is located. Huh? What a fascinating distant lead. What a fascinatingly distant communique. But as far as you're aware of its specific connotation, you're not aware if it belongs to merchants. You're not aware if it belongs to governmental bodies. You just know that that's the region in which it is located. Or airs from. Well, this on the one hand, Landron really wants to crack this baby open and gaze upon its succulent secrets. But on the other hand, that wouldn't be a very honest thing to do. Yeah, and keep in mind you can consult the those of your party who are nearby if you want to ask them if you would uh, if they would their a take on whether to open it or not. And keep in mind, it, as far as you can tell, it is addressed to Bora Calfhart, which is the dwarf merchant who hired you guys to protect his caravan. Oh, well, then we should probably take it to him. All right, so do you stash it? Uh, yes, I'm going to put it into the um, good old bag of my bag, as opposed to holding. Yes, and, uh, as far as, as I ever saw, nobody has a bag of holding. Is that um? Is that everything I can find within this uh, little shack? Uh, like I said, on the table you also see a short bow and a couple arrows. You see a bed in the corner here, uh, where the goblin slept, and there's the goblin's corpse itself. You want to loot that? Uh, yes. Right, Let's loot the corpse. All loot right. The bodies. Um, on the body, all you find is you find two gold pieces. So, 
<clears throat> you find that in a similar like little side satchel to what the other one had that uh, Bell's obviously that's meta information. I don't as far as well, you actually were by the window, so you would have seen Bell Starius loot uh, that goblin. So yeah, similar to that goblin, I uh, got two. Go I've got a couple uh, pieces of money in its pocket. Obviously, more valuable than the two silver that were in uh, the one that Bell Starius looted. So this one, you get the implication also by how he his outfit was that he was maybe of slightly higher rank than his uh, compatriots. Not quite like a full goblin lord or anything, just more important than his two fellows. Okay, so uh, two gold, uh, a few arrows, and a short bow. Yep. Okay, he's going to take this. I've written this down. He's going to take this and kind of... There's no, there's no real good surfaces to do this on, so he's going to take these uh, outside and just kind of put it in a little pile for, okay. you so, know, report his, report the loot. Like here, or like more towards the center of the camp? Like, where'd you want next, to? Next to the body. Next to the body oh, outside right next... where the folk smoke cloud was. Okay, so yeah. over here? Yeah, next okay. to the lodge. Okay. Mill, whichever. And he's going to uh, go out and start helping with the rest of the investigation. Alrighty. So, let's move right there. Um, so, Belstarius, uh, Jacoria, you know, is, uh, what do you guys want to do now? Uh, I have you... already specified that I want to go into the house that is to the northeast of me. Oh, I apologize. <clears throat> um, all right. So go in there. I uh, don't need to really roll perception. Um, so in the shed that you've checked in the north, uh, there all that there is is you see there's two bunks, uh, two bunk beds. So four, you know, one, two, one, two, uh, two sets of where like where goblins could sleep and rest, but they're empty beds. And you also notice that there is a small chest in the corner here, just a wooden chest, no lock or anything on it, just. An old uh, chest. Do you want to do anything? Uh, yeah. First, I would like to check under the mattresses. All right. Uh, all right. So under the master mattresses, you notice uh, a couple of stashed weapons, maybe a hatchet or two. Uh, you also notice a small sack of uh, <clears throat> a small, well, a small little sack of something. Uh, do you want to grab it? Uh, yes. I would like to investigate it before I grab it. All right, uh, go ahead and uh, roll. Eighteen. <clears throat> All right, so as far as you can tell, it's just a, a normal sack. There's no energy emanating from it. There's no uh, bad vibe off of it. It's just a normal sack. You can tell from where you're standing that it looks fairly heavier. Uh, like there's something, you know fairly fairly weighted in it because you can see a little bit of the a little bit of a distortion in the boards underneath the mattress that were are kind of being pushed down slightly kind of warped by the weight of it keep in mind it is big enough to fit in just your hand it's not like a very big satchel yeah i would like to open it and take a look inside all right so you open up the satchel and you notice that it has a a lot it's basically the the main loot of the the goblins because in it you see 72 gold pieces i'm gonna pocket that all right you're gonna tell your party uh as of this moment in time no okay go ahead and pocket that uh i will also now take a look at that chest all right <clears throat> so you will uh you, you're not gonna investigate just gonna open it right yeah all right not joking see if it laughs <laughs> Uh, so you open up the chest, and in it you see nothing. It's an empty chest. Yeah. Well, it's good thing I checked under those mattresses. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> very good, very add good move. <laughs> it was a trick. Add this money. <laughs> it's a, it was a trick. They they think we we's gonna put the the money in the chest, but we's actually going to put it under the bed. No and one will ever think of this. Old, correct. Yes, uh, 72. 72 gold. 72? 72. Add that real quick. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Money, money, money. Right. So, I take it you're done in that shed? 
Yeah, uh, I'll go up the stairs on the opposite side, heading towards the um, the, uh, the the mill. All right. So you're heading for the mill, Belstarius uh, and Landron. Are you done in the camp? Or are you following the party? I'm going to take what's of the loot from there. So I've I've got the the barrel all trussed up and just slung over my shoulder. All right. The black the black powder and then the loot that I found. I'm going to pile it over where Landron put the other stuff. All right. Are you taking the barrel with you into this uh, into the lumber mill? Yes. All right, so uh, you're going to be encumbered. It's basically, wear, wearing it like a uh, backpack, sort of. I'm, I'm going to set it down to the side before I walk in, though. Uh, what's your strength? Uh, uh, let me check. Ten. So. I'm going to say you're encumbered by that, uh, so you okay. will be more weighted. You're going to make a little bit more noise, and you're also going to be walking kind of clunky. So... You'll have disadvantage on stealth rolls. So I have a question. Yes. Uh, since he took all of the stuff out of that particular room and pushed it out towards Landon, um, do I see that shield? Um. Stuff. What, did you put it back in the uh, in the sack, or did you put it out bare? Bell, sorry, yes. I put everything that fit in the sack back in the sack, put it by the okay. the um the loot and anything else that was sort of usable I set to the side, so the shield would probably be separate. All right, I'd say yeah, you can see the shield like right there on the outside. Uh I would kindly ask that someone pass me that shield. Oh, oh uh, let me get that for you. And he is going to uh try and lift up the shield. Uh later. that is probably bigger than him. All right. Um, actually, how uh, remind me how tall you are again? Two feet. Two feet. Okay. Yeah. So I remember correctly. Seven strength. I don't think I can actually lift up a shield. Well, um, it's a wooden shield, so yeah, you it's, absolutely it, should be able. To. It's it's a fairly light shield, so I'd say you can lift it all right. It's it's big for you, yeah, but eh, I'd say you're fine. Large buckler, small. Viking style round shield, probably. Yeah, it's not, not a not a not a massive shield, not a not one of those things you you see like uh, like a two foot diameter little buckler. Not massive. Uh, so Landry picks that up, uh, and you want to bring it to Dracoria? Yes, as requested. Okay. <clears throat> so Landry brings that over to you, Dracoria. All right. Um, I take that and I equip that, and that raises my um, uh, my armor class by two. Yep, plus two. All right. So that's in your equipment. All right, and Belstarius, I assume you're. Uh, yeah, but I'm over it. I've walked over to the right. mill with everyone else. So. All right, and you still have the barrel, correct? Mm. Or did you leave it? Yeah, I, I set it down, but I'm gonna pick it up later when we walk okay. back. Okay. So yeah. I'm assuming you guys left that all. Right here. Have that represent the sack. All right. <clears throat> so everybody's ready to enter the mill. Uh, hold on. Now I got to change sheets. Yeah. All right. Oh, damn you! <laughs> That's just awkward. There we go. All right. So, you guys have entered. I assume. Is it uh? Is it possible I could explore the mill before everyone else comes in? Well, hold on. Let me uh. Let me draw what you guys can see at this point. All right, so you guys are on like this little uh, deck uh, over that like six foot quote unquote plateau. Uh, so yeah, like I said, the whole mill is like elevated. Uh, there's only one door, and I'll say two windows on either side. And that's all you guys can see right now. Make sure 
place in the right order here. And there are other external w windows looking out to the where we just came from, or? Oh well, like I said, you guys are on the deck, so oh, right. you got a flight of stairs here, which lead down to where the rest of the uh, lumber encampment is. <clears throat> but uh, you're on just like a like a open deck, no roof, no obscurities. Uh, the entrance to the mill, you see that you got the two windows and you got the door. There's no actual doors here anymore. There's remnants of their hinges, but they're gone. Like over time, they've just been crumbled in, pushed in by probably wild, a fauna and wildlife. Or just time has rotted the hinges to the point where the doors just came off, but they're gone. Uh, can I explore the door on the right? Is that a door? I know these are windows. Those are windows. Oh, oh, you so the door's in the middle. Yeah, this is the door. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to explore through the door. All right. Uh, obviously stealthily because you know. Obviously. All right. So. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oh yeah, roll me stealth. I probably should get the roll first before I start moving. Well, uh, would his previous stealth roll still carry over, considering he hasn't done anything yet? Yeah, so I haven't done anything. Uh, you know what? That's fair. Earlier. That's fair. Uh, all right, we'll still roll with that 27. Okay. All right, so you enter in here. All right. So the... So you see inside the lumber mill, it's fairly badly illuminated. So do you have dark vision? Um, I don't think so, but let me check. All right. Oh, well, Real quick, I just realized that my Eldritch Cannon is still out there. Can we say that that's, I left it there to guard the loot? Yes. Uh, it's, it's uh, that's actually what I assumed, because I actually have that in my notes that you still have it active. So I just assumed yeah, you left it there. Uh, I probably should have yeah, asked. That's long. my bad. Uh, I just assumed you left it there to guard it. I just forgot about it and I read it. Yeah, it's once per long rest is how long it stays. So it'll deactivate after a long rest. Okay. Um, no, I do not have dark vision. You do not have I do dark not vision. see in the dark. All right. But if it's, if it's at least a little lit. It's it's a little lit. So you can make out the rough uh, the rough uh, area of the room. All right. So in the center, you have. A very large saw. Just <clears throat> uh, this very large saw and some little equipment on the side where it's manually cranked uh, and used to cut the fairly larger boards, at least back in the day. Um, <clears throat> uh, alongside that, oh, sorry. So, because they didn't build it by a river to make it easy on themselves. Nope. It's in the middle of a forest. Uh, amongst it, you see an assortment of uh, boxes uh, in the room. Not many, just you know, a couple boxes here and there. Probably where they supply or put some old tools or just everyday items. Or maybe even just like wood chippings uh, that they might use on like a fire on like a cold night. Um, let's see. With obscured vision, you you also can make out a kind of office room. It's not very clear. Uh, it's got a single doorway here. Uh, no, uh, kind of like a what would you call? It? It's not like glass, but like a opening in the wall where like the the officer could like see the workers doing their job. What would you call that? Just like. Just a window. Just, just like a glassless window, like an opening. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can kind of make that out, but it's it's probably the darkest part of the room. You can only make out the the walls and the and the little doorway into it and the windows on the other side. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go kind of to the east around those crates. All right. To the east. And I'm gonna move to the office. All right. Do your Don't east, my like east. south. Right, so. Yeah, that way. All right, so you're going to move around here. Yep. And then if I can go to the office. And if you can go to the office. Yeah. All right, if there's one there, you know. second. There's one thing I've got to do. Don't you in combat, I think. You don't have movement limits yet? No, you do uh, not. Yeah. It's You're not in combat at the moment. But, one but, it's a, but it's entirely possible that I step on the landmine. 
Hold on, let me check something. You have no idea if they've used this area as a latrine. And that too. That that kind of landmine. No, I'm thinking like an actual landmine, but that um, too. <laughs> goblin shit. Oh. All right, just checking some info. All right. Yeah, good to go. All right, so you said you moved over here. How are you looking in the window? Are you looking at the door? What are we doing? Yes, I'm gonna look in the window first. Oh shit! What am I shaking my head over a little bit? They had to draw my sharpie. <laughs> God damn you! There we go. All right, so you say you look in the window. Mm -hmm. All right, so you still got your stealth. Hold on. Grab something real quick here. So you look into the little office area, and before you even look in, you hear snoring. Loud, boisterous, deep tone snoring. Stab the baby. What you can make out <laughs> is the goblin boss. Now, he is not massively bigger than the ice goblins you've come up to at this point, but he is a decent size bigger. Um, he's, in fact, fairly almost human-sized. He's, he's a, he's a buffy boy, too. Um, you can tell he's pretty well armored. He's got his weapon in his hand as he sleeps. He's, he's big. Also in the room, though, you see a small chest and a desk with some papers on it. But that's all you can make out from where you're at. I'm gonna, I'm gonna duck back down and like whisper to myself under my breath. Papers, you say? Elite goblins. Goblins. Uh, uh, Sam Wright. Uh, uh, I call uh, him. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna assume he's a heavy sleeper, so I'm just gonna go into his room. Come on. No, wait. You have to tell us. You have to tell us whose voice did you say it in? Yours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hurt me like this? Why do you wound me so? I'm gonna like stick my head like around the door. I'm gonna look for like a trip wire or something. Right. Something that might. Like... Yeah, so you guys can see a little bit better. Just traps or something. Alright, so you're gonna move your head around the door just to see if there's traps or anything? You said? Yeah, anything that looks like it'll alert him if something walks in. Alright, so from what you can tell. Uh, roll me investigation. Invest oh no. I'm not good at that. Keep in mind, the rest of the party is not in the building yet. They are not aware of what you're doing. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Uh, you, from what you can tell from where you're at, you can see definitely some cans being uh, held up by some string. And they're connected to uh, a, a, like a little ropey cord that wraps around to the doorway. And to the windows where you see a little, just a very subtly hidden, but not just not subtly enough that you can definitely see it. Uh, this little rope that, if just tapped, will shake those cans and wake this guy up. It's like an old um, traditional alert system. Nice. I'm going to uh, reach up and start like I'm going to grab the rope at like the top most that I can. Okay, so. When you say grab the rope, are you grabbing the rope with the cans on it? Yes, I'm going to grab it as high up as I can on it. High up as I can. Okay, let me think if you have to roll something for that. Um, Would that be a sleight of hand, perhaps? Yeah, we'll go sleight of hand. Roll me sleight of hand. Cool. Yes, because I want to I wanna grab it where the cans won't jiggle, and I can cut the rope above it. All right, and disable the trap. Yeah, that's definitely sleight of hand. Yeah. All right, so roll me that. Oof. Mm. What'd you get? Eleven. You attempt to grab the. Uh, you attempt to grab the cans, but in your attempt to grab them, you just shake it just enough that the cans go. 
I'm gonna like freeze. I'm gonna look at the goblins. All right, hold on. Let me you should just the baby. Let me give you a chance here. Let me roll. Instantly, the second that thing makes a noise, he is awake. Oh, no. All right. <clears throat> so the goblin boss stirs, and he lifts himself up. His muscular body just—you know, you can hear the stretching, almost like rubber, like as his leathery skin stretches. And he gets up, and he immediately throws a rock towards the doorway. Second, I see him move. I'm or wait, no, dang. Um. I was going to try to dodge out of the way. All right, roll me acrobatics. Perfect. 22. Yeah, you miss. He, you, uh, he misses you, and you fucking ninja that shit. You roll away like an expert uh, acrobatics guy. I was trying to think of a... I don't like it. Yeah, that. Nice. Just whew. You know what? Right. That's fine. And um, after you roll, you uh, you take a look like right over that glasses window, and you notice he's awake, but he's not like aware. He just instinctually threw that rock, so he doesn't know you're there quite yet. He knows some something disturbed the cans, so his eyes are kind of half sleepy, but he's starting to get to his feet. I have a suggestion. Hmm. Use your voice mimicry to start making the sound of the cans while they're not moving. The thing is about that that tip. That's a meta tip. Like that's true. You can't give it. You can't give it to the actual character. You're not. You're not in the room at the time. Yeah. So uh, uh, I don't know if I'll. I mean, I, I'll I'll say if it if we can make the argument that it occurred to him and that you're just reminding the player if we want to do that and we can roll with it that way if. People aren't opposed oh, no. to uh, a meta interruption. It's fine. I have an idea. It's a f- it's a flashback it, to a previous conversation. Yeah, I was like, it, it involves my mimicry though. Okay, but it's not a bad idea. It's not a idea though. Um, I'm going to mimic. Uh, I'm going to move back behind the crates over here. Okay, so you're going to move so back to like, these crates. Yes, well, like on the other side. Of, oh, okay, that'll be able to work. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna mimic two. Uh, I'm gonna mimic the uh, goblin I heard a minute ago. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm Can gonna, you? Uh, are you mimicking exactly what he said? Or are you like? I'm gonna, I'm gonna mimic the name again. Okay. Like, <clears throat> uh, do you I'm have to? Make, what do you have to roll for that? Or do you have to roll for that? I do not have to roll for that. Or wait, well, I mean, if I want to. Because I'm tempted to ask you to roll persuasion. Uh, I think that'd be more if you're like oh. having a conversation. I know that's why I'm questioning it. Like, um, if it would you would actually that. use performance in this particular case. Charisma deception. Uh, Charisma deception. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, roll me that it, to to uh, make sure they don't know it's an, it, 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 uh, an imitation. Imitation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, make it. I'm gonna make it sound like the the goblin Greg, I think his name was. Uh is been messing is like messing with that shit. This is this is one of those times where as a DM you're like, shit, that 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 name I gave that thing just on the spot. I didn't write <laughs> down, so now I'm like, fuck. Uh yeah, we'll go with Greg. <laughs> I, I remember it being Greg. But yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh like yell that out as if it was that first goblin warning the other goblin not to mess with the boss effectively. Okay. But yes. Uh, deception. Twenty dirty. Nice. All right. So the goblin. So the goblin hears that cry and and hears the the words. Out. You know. <laughs> And you can tell, like, you can immediately see the recognition in his voice. And, um, he yells, he yells out, Rocking eyes! Rocking eyes, Greg! And he sits back down on the bed and lies back down. B- before he gets down. Wait. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm thinking if I should just shoot him or not. Right, keep in mind, you do have an opening right here. But it's, I do have an opening. Yeah. I'm curious why you haven't. Uh, back 
is his back is turned to you. It's the perfect time. I'm gonna be honest. It was mostly because I wanted to get out of the way, but this is this is the perfect time actually. I'm gonna draw my short bow. Five uh, check. Yeah, five check this this little uh, this little goblin dude. Nothing little about him. All right. Fair. Try to hit him with my short bow. Roll the hit. Would I have advantage because uh, he doesn't know I'm there? I would give you advantage, yes, because this is still stealth and he has no idea you're there. Yes. 23 to hit. Uh, hits. Nice. He takes 8 piercing from the short bow and then 5 sneak attack damage. Alright. So 13 in total. 13 in total. There's my pencil. Ooh. So 13, you said? Yes. Alright, he is still alive. Cool. Um, since I am now out of stealth... And I'm pissed. To, uh, yeah. I'm going to jump over... I'm going to try to jump behind the crates where I'm out of line of sight. All right. Uh, he's still aware you're there, though, so I'm gonna have you have you roll initiative. Uh, okay. He doesn't know exactly where you are in the room, but he knows you're there. He knows he's under attack now. So yeah. Everybody, roll me initiative. Yeah. That was like, I would like to use my bonus action to try to hide. Go back in the yeah, uh, Go into that. Right, so he rolled 16. eight. He rolled eighteen. So Oof. Right, you said you Belisarius. You roll. Uh, you roll sixteen. 16? Right. Decoria goes on thirteen. I rolled a seven. Oof. Yes, I would. Uh, I would like to try to hide again. If <laughs> since I uh, jumped over to try to break line of sight. All right. Um. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. Uh, before like the we start initiative, but tell me what was your number again for initiative? Seven. Seven. Ooh. All right, uh, right. Landron, what what did you get? I got a twelve. A twelve. Twenty five on stealth though. Twenty five. Nice. Um. So yeah, I'll I'll still we'll still be going with initiative since again he knows he's under attack, so he's going to be running out. But you, he doesn't know where you are, so. You're, he's not aware of where you are, but he's aware he's under attack, so he's going to be searching. So, we'll still go initiative. And he's first. Let me double check the order. All right, so he's first, then Belistarius, then Land, uh, then, uh, sorry, Dracoria, then Landrin, and Kiko. Roger! <laughs> Alright, so his first move is to enter the room in a fucking rage. What's his movement? 30 feet. Alright, so he goes there. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Alright, so he moves out as much as he can, and he's he's given a look around, he's given a look around, but again, uh, he also has dark vision, up to 60 feet, so he can see the room as clear as day. So, he... But, like, as it, as you said... Yes, it does. Uh, that's still obscuring it. So it doesn't matter if you can see in the dark or not. You can't see through objects. It's not x-ray vision. So yeah. he still doesn't see you, but I gotta roll for him just in case. So he is looking for you. Let's see if he can beat a 25. He cannot. <laughs> that was a bad roll. <laughs> so he has no fucking clue where you are. So he's done his max movement. Let's see, does he have any bonus actions? None that apply. All right, so he's done with his turn. So that means next up is Bellastarius. So yeah, you, I do... you guys are still not aware. Well, yeah, you, know, you can hear. You guys heard the Goblin Lord yell out initially when he got. He thought it was a uh, a mistake of messing with the boss, and but you also hear him like in a rage right now, looking for uh, looking for Kiko. All right, so I hear. So you all are aware. I step through the door, see what's going on, and All right. I, I obviously see this. I assume you're. Uh, I assume you have no stealth that you're gonna work for here. Nope. Nope. I stupidly just blunder in because I heard a noise. All right. 
Goblin Lord sees you. <laughs> All right, so uh, I see him. I see uh, <clears throat> Kiko hiding. Uh, I'm gonna. Can I do a quick check to see if there's any like random objects lying around, like tools, saws, that sort of thing? Uh, yep. So that's just a rule perception, or yeah, that's just perception. All right, uh, twelve. And just to double check, do you have dark vision? No, I don't. Okay, so I don't, at least no. I don't think I do. If you did, I would have given you advantage. Um, you can tell there is an assortment of like different uh, little tools, different little items here and there. Uh, mostly like old saws. And stuff just lying around. Uh, not many. Uh, and what of them that there are, they're in a very poor condition. Like, pure rust. It's dim horse right. choppers. And are there any in a direct line from to the, the goblin boss? Like uh, lying between us so. From where you are to him, direct line, there is, uh, other than just bad wooden floors and uh, some <laughs> rickety boards... There is no saws, there are no tools, just directly between you. Just, again, like, maybe a couple over by the where the barrels used to be. Like I said, those were mostly where they probably kept their tools or uh, wood chippings. All right, so I'm going to move, so west, so to you. I'm going to move that direction over by those, over by the that saw and that those uh, crates over to the that direction. Um, uh, yeah, move, I'll move, let's see. You already moved about 15 feet, so... So 15, so I've got 15 more. Yep. So, you're going to move as close as you can, right? Yeah, I'll move as close as I can get. Alright, so we'll leave you there. Alright. And let's see, is that saw that's between us, is that terribly tall? Or is it fairly low? It's, uh, this saw? No, the the big one. Oh, the big saw. Oh, the big saw is a, is very big. Clearly built to cut the extremely large uh trees that are in so in, in the I'd, forest so so were i to use catapult to like a spell to pick up an object and throw it that would be in the way yes i'd okay. say it, it's well above him uh in terms of height it's i'd say including the platform that it's you know being spun on it's probably a total of like six feet off the ground to the tip of the blades Let's see. But if you're going for a direct hit at him, you only have to worry about the platform because the the uh, the blade itself is in the center of this uh, hollow platform where the blade uh, where the saw is spun around in a circle. So the if you're just trying to get over that, the platform itself is like four feet off the ground. All right, so I'll just from where I'm at, I think I can hit him with a firebolt, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. I'll just cast Firebolt at him for now. Alrighty, uh, roll the hit. Alright. 16. Does that give me any pluses on that? You don't have any advantages. Okay, so yeah, 16. Alright, All right, 16. Let me double check that. That does not hit. Oh, okay. And I think I'm out of moves and yeah, see, I believe I a, that, like would, that would have been your last move. I have a bonus move, but my Eldritch Cannon is outside, not here. All right. All right. So the fire. So once you launch the fireball, you're still taking in the situation. You still, you know, just came into the the room. So when you launch the fireball, the goblin uh, again. He saw you into the room. He's well aware of you. Uh, and as you've been able to tell just initially, he's clearly instinctually, if anything, smarter than the other goblins you already encountered. Uh, so he just narrowly notices the fireball coming and dodges out of the way. Uh, it hits the ground, and you notice it starts to, to light up a lot of the dry kindling. It's not a full-blown, like, building fire yet, but we're gonna say it's a, a now environmental hazard. That is a terrible flame thing. Oh, it works. Yep. So you got a little bit of a small fire going. Alright, so next up after Belisarius is Dracoria. You're up. Uh, how much movement 
would I use to move towards that window that's to the east? Towards this window? Yep. Or Okay, so this window, you're right there, so I'd say less than five feet. Okay, so I would like to move to that and peer inside. All right. Uh, you're looking inside, and that fire, if you don't have dark vision, that definitely, if anything, is illuminating the room a lot more, so you can... Is there a, a circle of how far it illuminates? Or? Uh, I'll just say it illuminates... If you can see my pencil, this whole area. So you're a little bit more obscure since you're further away from it, but this general vicinity. I'm also a seven foot tall metal man. So well, yeah, so you're inherently going to reflect it though. So yeah, pretty much everything that's important minus, I'll probably say everything over here is visible. Okay. Um, how much time has passed between the last battle and this battle? Mm, probably a matter of 10-15 minutes. Okay, so with that being said, my hex is still active, so I move my hex to him. Okay. And I will cast Eldritch Blast through that opening and try and hit him. Alright, uh, roll the hit. Actually, what's the range on that, by the way? Just me dose. 120 feet. Okay, yeah, I don't even need to check. That's yeah, less than 120 feet. Alright, yeah, roll the hit. Uh, that's a seven. That does not hit. Motherfucker, with a plus five, I get a goddamn seven. I was about to say, like, (laughs) (laughs) damn, (laughs) that's a bad roll. Uh, All right, so So, just a little bit of a question about the Eldritch Blast. Is that got any, like, heat or flammable elements to it, or Uh, is it just... No, it is, um, like a negative ray. Okay, so just, you know, just energy, so yeah. All right, yeah. so you shoot that out, but unfortunately, uh, as you're you know shooting out the Elders Blast, something just kind of gets in your eye a little bit, like a little bit of dust just out of nowhere, and you uh, unfortunately direct it right away and get it and shoot it basically like right, just missing Kiko, and you hit uh, this back room a little bit. Okay, so I've used five feet of movement. I would like to use half of my movement to climb over into the room. All right. uh, so that's now 20 feet of movement. And then I would like to use the remainder 10 feet to make a beeline towards him. Okay. And get it off. Just on the distance. You said 10 feet? Right, yeah, so. because that, you know, I'm climbing over an object, so that automatically yep. uses half my movement, so that only allowed me ten feet left. All right, so that's where you move to, so. Everyone is in the room but Landrin. Speaking of, Landrin, uh, you are up. Did we lose Landrin? Landrin. Oh, little kobold. Um, yeah. Sorry, the dogs are acting up. Okay, so my turn. I don't have anything I can do to this guy. Um, can You don't have any support actions or any... Uh, I'm out of spell slots except for level twos. Any cantrips? Uh, actually, I do have an idea. I'm going to sidle up to the little edge of the entryway, and I'm going to cast Prestidigitation to just kind of make a bunch of sparks in the entryway to distract him. Like, the fuck's going on there? Uh, okay. What should you roll for that? It's not a hit. It's not an attack. I'll say to cast a spell, he doesn't need to roll anything. But, um, I know that, but I'm like, I, I'm wondering, like, to to achieve distracting him. Performance. All right, uh, roll performance. Is it probably opposed by the guy's wisdom check? Fourteen. Fourteen. Do I put that up against my wisdom? Uh, Oof. that works. He is distracted. He is very. He is now. He is now oddly like hesitant because now he's confused. What's what's with the sparks? Like, 
Hey, why, why is, uh, why is, why is things getting sparkly at the door there? So even though he's got yes, three, yes, <laughs> even though he's got three combatants, he's like, oh, the sparkles. <laughs> so now he, you know, he's kind of on the back foot. He's kind of, he's kind of scared. Not only through the sheer number of opponents now, but now again, this weird mystical sparkly stuff uh, at the doorway. It's, it's really got him on edge. So he's uh he's, he's he's less confident than he was initially. Still mad, still and, ready to fight, but kind of scared. And leaning back behind the entryway. Holy <laughs> cop in my ass. Holy cop in my ass. All right. Kiko's out there. So that's your that's your whole turn, Landron. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Kiko, you're up. Ooh, I'm gonna make a beeline for that chest over there. Uh, this chest? Because you're already over here, so... No, the chest in his room. I'm gonna run... You're gonna try and gonna go past him? Yes. Uh... Wouldn't he get an opportunity from that, or... I was like, he's... He to... He's not aware of you. He's, you know, you're still stealth away from him, but... You're gonna he's run distracted. right up to him. You know, true, he's distracted, so... No, not run to him, like... Are you gonna like, run around? Or... No, straight from where I am. Where that window is. Okay. Do you want to get attack of opportunity? Well, I don't think I'd be close enough. Uh, what's your movement? Thirty. Uh, thirty. Okay, so five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and five, thirty. So you just kind of miss the window. But I'll say, as he's distracted and all this other stuff, uh, yep, you make it successfully past him. Cool. And uh, I think I'll go ahead and use my bonus action to move an additional 30 to dash. All right. So Which... to dash uh, an additional. Okay. So through the door. Uh, through, the, through the window. Through the window. Okay. So as we just established, uh, if you go over something, it takes over half your movement. Uh, second. I have uh, for my thief, I have second story work. You can even uh, climbing no longer cost you extra movement. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah. So you make it over there, and you make it to the chest. Oh, I thought that was the task. Oh, sorry. Yep. Ugh. I'm confusing myself now. That's great. Cool. Awesome. All right. So you're at the chest. Uh, that's it. That's that's your whole move. All right. Uh, what I can do for now. That means it's the Bolsh man's turn. Oh wait 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 hold up! I've, I haven't used my action, have I? You just uh, use your uh, movement and then you used uh, your bonus move. Okay, so, okay, yeah, I haven't used my action. Okay. Um, can I try to lock pick the chest? There's no lock on it. Oh, there's not. Nope. I'm gonna open it up. All right. Uh, you open it up and you see th- uh, three small. Small barrels, like basically, they look like if you put a handle on them, they'd be mugs, at like a, like a pub or an inn. What's that sound? Tankard. Okay, I don't hear it now. Uh, but yeah, you see three small, uh, <clears throat> three small, again, really small barrels with with actual little barrel heads in them. Uh, about. They'd fit in your hand, and again, if they had a handle, they'd be a mug in a pub or an inn. Uh, and you just see three of them. Uh, do you want to do anything with them? If I can, I'm just going to pocket all three of them. Okay. Um, how much inventory do you have? Um, how much do they weigh? Uh, I'd say probably each weigh about five pounds. Five pounds? Ooh, these are heavy things. Uh, yeah, they are pretty densely packed with stuff. My current weight is about 74 pounds. 74 and a half pounds. Which I think... Um, All three of them would add up to roughly like 15 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll say actually one of them, uh, I checked my notes, isn't doesn't have the same shit in it as the other two. So that one only weighs a pound. So one of them is a pound, the other two are like five pounds. So it adds up to 11 pounds. Cool. I have that written down as stuff. Stuff. 
All right, so you stash those, and that's your move. Yeah, that, that's it. All right. Do. So that means it's the boss man's turn. So he didn't see you. He's still weirded out by the uh, sparklers. <laughs> so he's going to... But he kind of... Actually, do I need to roll something to compose himself? Oh, uh, yeah, I will. I don't think I need to, but I will. No, so if he's fighting, like... Okay, yeah. So he's, you know, he's recomposed himself. Uh, not only to recompose himself, but he is rearing to go. Whatever is going on in his head, he is just... I'm, fuck it. I'm... Let's, let's do this! Let's go! Woo! Uh, he's just... He's, he's hyped himself up like, a, like the most hardcore coach in the NFL. Uh, so now... I keep miss. This is what happens when you have like twelve different things you got to keep track of. All right, so I guess. Yes. All right, so he can move thirty feet and equal distance. So he's just gonna go to let's say because of the fire, he's gonna go around the fire and aim for Jacoria. All right, so 9, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. All right, makes a beeline for you. I don't know if that's close enough. Is that close enough? Ten yeah. feet away. No, you need to be within five feet. That's ten feet, unless he has a reach weapon. Uh, he does not. Yeah, so he's just short of hitting you. Let me double check. Oh, wait, hold on. He does have a javelin. Yeah, but I'm gonna say he's not in the he's not in the mindset to a want to throw it and b remember that he has it. So he's in the mind of I'm a shank you. Yeah, he's he's in a he's in a rage right now. He wants he's running at you. He wants to beat some fuckers up. So that does it. He doesn't have any bonus actions. Yep. So he is uh, done his move. It's right on, Yedricoria. All right, so and that means next up is Belisterius. What do you want to do, man? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that saw that's lying on the ground right next to him, and I'm going to use Catapult. So what that does is I pick an object weighing 1 to 5 pounds within range that isn't being worn or carried. The object flies in a straight line up to 90 feet in a direction you choose before falling to the ground, stopping early if it impacts against a solid surface. The object would strike a creature. Okay, so basically if it strikes them, they have to do a dexterity saving throw. If okay. they fail, the object strikes them, and then they take 3d8 bludgeoning damage. All right, so in this case, we wouldn't roll to hit. It's just a roll to, it's for dex save. Yeah, it's a dex save. Okay, so, all right, so you go ahead and throw it, and I got to roll for his dex save. All right, let's see. I'm trying to find where the... Oh, there it is. Yep, yeah, so dex save is... Third. Yeah. Right. Ooh. What do you get? Uh, suffice it to say, he failed. Um, that thing hits. Nice. All right, so let me bonk. Eight. Oh. Do do do. do. All right. Eight. So that's 12 bludgeoning damage. 12. So that saw lifts off the ground and flings at him. He is still alive. Very that's stubborn. Right. Is that going to be it for your move, or do you I have see, a bonus I action? That's my action, and then let's see. Can you use a cantrip for bonus action or no? I believe a cantrip is considered oh. a normal action, unless okay, I'm mistaken. That's, that's yeah, there I, are. Yeah, there's yeah. a handful of cantrips that do activate as a bonus action, but it'll tell you yeah, if it, was, it is eligible as a bonus action. Yeah, yeah that's usually noted. So, do you have any cantrips that are considered bonus actions? Just firebolt mending. So, right. I don't think firebolt is. 
Ooh. No, Firebolt is not. That Firebolt is, is a primary a, action. That's definitely a primary. All right, so that does All it for right. your turn. Yep. All right, so that means, Dracoria, you are up. So I have a question. Ooh. If he were to lose direct line of sight of me, and I were to, let's say, magically appear behind him, uh, would I have uh, the ability to attack with advantage because he doesn't know? Yes, that would also be considered a stealth attack. Actually, no, it's not. I cast Misty Step, and I instantaneously disappear. I mean, it's, and not considered, I used... uh, it's not considered stealth, even though he loses perception of you? No, because I literally just okay, blink but, out okay, of so he's and, and okay, I can, I, okay, I understand. Okay, so because he's still aware of you, you just lost line of sight. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, I can see why that doesn't count as stealth. All right, so, uh, yeah. Go ahead for that, and I will say that is an advantage because he's not a, again loses direct line of sight. Yeah, so I use behind you. Yep, <laughs> so I use the last of my pack magic to do that, okay. um, and I'm now directly behind him, and I will take a shot with my uh, rapier here, and uh, twelve. I am assuming that does not hit. That does not. No. Oh wait, no, nope, no, nope, that was not at advantage. Come on. 22! That hits! That absolutely does hit. Yep. You ba you get him. You get him good. And he gets hit with uh, five points of damage, and since I had already used my hex, uh, and he's been hexed, he also takes an additional six points of necrotic damage. So five plus six necrotic So completely forgot about the hex. So can you uh, move my character directly behind him? Yep, all it is. Thank you very much, sir. No problem. Uh, let me see. So I used 15 feet of movement to be able to do that. Um, although that wasn't my movement, that was my spell. Uh, I am going to... And my turn. All right. Uh, all right. So he's still alive. He's still uh, still kicking. Definitely starting to to. F he's really starting to feel it. He's starting to show. He's like, oh fuck, this is. I'm not paid enough for this shit. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's 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 now he's now feeling the aster. Uh. All right. So please tell me you didn't. Uh, why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were classy. I, I, I'm as classy as I allow myself to be in each moment. Alright, so, Landrin, you're up. I don't want to be now. <laughs> okay, um, I don't have a prepared fuck. Um... I'm going to try and... Sh uh, I didn't bring the short bow in with me. Damn it. Um, I don't know. What's the range on this? Touch. Uh, pass. you going to skip your turn? Yeah. All right. That means Kiko. Ah, uh, yes. My time to shine. Now I'm moving to the desk. <laughs> my time to shine I am going to let everybody else kill the I am just going to sneak around alright so that's about yes that's about uh, before the fire sure. engulfs the entire building I am going like, to try fire? speaking yes. of it uh, I probably should have noted it I meant to say it right before we switch. I was going to say it uh, once we got to the goblin turn again it is starting to spread though who started it I Belisarius uh, with his first fireball Yes. So uh, I'm going to be the little loot goblin of uh, this particular area. I'm going to say, the, like, is the fire like double every turn? Or? I'm going to have a double every uh, rotation of the turns. So every rotation. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Because so that's Kiko's last. I'll just do it now. I was going to do it right uh, with the uh, goblin at the beginning of the next one, but either way it works, Kiko or the goblin. Because yeah. both represent the the tail ends of the the rotation. 
Everybody going? Yeah. So I'm just going to like forget whatever's in here. I'm just going to start grabbing stuff from the desk. Like All right. Pulling, pulling drawers out, grabbing stuff, putting it in, in, uh, in pouches. Just everything that's here. Every, look at it. Everything? Everything. everything. Okay. It's not the desk itself. Um, I'll just tell you the added weight then. Uh, yes. I'd say uh, everything that you grab just probably adds up to just about six pounds. Six pounds. All in all. All right. And uh, if I can, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna real quick look under the bed. Uh, I, all assume, right. I assume this guy has like an actual bed. Uh, he does. It's a fairly large bed. Actually, looks like it might have belonged to somebody who lived nearby that they stole. Uh, so I'm gonna have you roll. Well, no, because you just lifted up the bed. All right. So you roll. You lift up the bed, and uh, what you see is you just see a single rolled up scroll. Um, I guess since I'm here, I might as well grab that. Right, grab that. It's paper, so it's not very heavy. Yep. Say so it's like, like less than half a pound. So. Yeah. Alright, So that's all those items. Uh, I'm assuming that was your primary action. I say, well, yes, but that's not all those items. He still has bed sheets. You can uh, see the bed sheets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the they're torn and raggedy, but if you want to grab them. <laughs> I'm just going to steal his bed sheets, why not? Okay. Uh, you, 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 you take the torn... Uh, make sure to note that. They're torn and raggedy bed sheets. Torn and raggedy bed sheets. Perfect. All right. You want to take the mattress, too? Uh, I, I, <laughs> that's, a, that's a little bulkier, and certainly you'd have to make an argument for how you'd take that shit. But <laughs> You're pulling it out to throw on the fire to try and, put it, try and smother it out, but... I never said anything about a fire. I'm just showing the spread sheets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I believe that's all your primary action. Yeah, <laughs> you ransacking the room. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably more than I can feasibly do, but I'll I'll take it. I'll consider it action and bonus action. Okay. Because right. yeah, I, I I do have something that lets me. Pilfer. Build with stuff faster. Yeah, I'll just move to your guy that way. Alright, so... That is your turn. Alright, that means it is the big man's turn. And he is... Well aware of you. Okay, he doesn't need to protect your So, as, as a... Um, question. Mm. Um, does his movement of having to turn around provoke an attack of opportunity? Why would it? He's not leaving I, I a would threatened say, square. I would say no. Uh, he's He may not leave the square, but he has to physically turn around. So with that, I have the opportunity to attack in that moment. So it would take more than six seconds to have to turn around, ready himself, then attack me. That's just reality. This, so this that's why I game. This is you lose. Uh, you disgust me, sir. Uh, I've provided my rationale. If you say no, that's perfectly fine. I'm just asking the question. I'm going to say no, because I don't... Yeah, you know, When I think of attack of opportunity, I think of lack of awareness. I think of definitely much more often than, than not stealth. He's well aware of you. As we both discussed earlier, you didn't jump into stealth. He, he knew you were still there. You attacked him. You got him, but he's now swishing around to hit you back. I don't consider this a moment where you would have an attack of opportunity. Okay. So I'm going to say no on that one. <clears throat> Alright, so... Has to hit an armor class of 15. Right. Let me roll to hit that. How the fuck? What weapon is he? What weapon is he wielding, anyways? I'm just kind of curious. Oh like, yeah, he's, he's wearing a sim. He's uh wielding a simtar and a shield. Okay. 
A wooden shield too, but so. Uh, that does not hit because it was a two. And even with the added stuff, that only adds up to four. So he. Uh, all right. So when he swishes around, he's he's in enough pain where he's you know. Yeah, he, he's he's wanting really hard to hit you, but when he flings out, he he feels the the wounds and the arrows that are, have 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 punctured him. He's he is really not feeling it. So when he swings, he swings so high it goes right over your head. You didn't need a duck or nothing. Just just whacks to the floor. Uh, totally misses you. Uh, uh, but he has multi attack, so that only makes. All right, but second attack is disadvantage, right? So also still doesn't hit. So when he goes in for his multi attack, he swings yet again. But this time, you know, you just take, you know, you take basically, you just suck in your gut, and he completely misses again, and whacks to the side, and you can tell he's a little off balance. He's at this point, he's kind of flailing. So that is it, because he has no bonus section. Yep, so that's his move. So next up is... Well, Elstarius, you're up, man. All right, so I'm going to move diagonally to... Let's see, that would be southeast, basically to the halfway point between me and the boss. Right. So... <laughs> Basically, just a forty-five degree angle, kind of towards the door. So, so like more like this. So yeah, about twenty feet. So yeah, right 20. there is good. So only twenty feet. Yep, twenty feet. All right, you're at twenty feet. All right, so I'm gonna let's see. About I find it fitting that you're the guy who caused the fire, considering the model I have right here is uh, a flamer guardsman. <laughs> I, I just I fitting. just noticed the irony there. Oh yeah, I forgot to use slots. So I've got two more slots. All right, so I'm going to use one more of my spell slots to use catapult again to grab a hold of the other saw that's laying on the ground. Let's see. I think which one did I throw last time? You threw this one. So okay, so I reach out. It's sixty feet. Is that sixty feet away? That should be yeah. Yep, that's like thirty. Thirty. 3.5 right, so feet away. I reach for that one and I will send it flinging straight at the boss. Right, so it's going from That was a deck saving throw, right? Yep, and he's got to beat a D. He's got to beat 13. Right. Nat 20 and plus his Damn modifier it. 22. So for the first time in this whole fight, you you see like his eyes like really pop open like he's got like this sixth sense. Uh, like, think of like those old Japanese movies where all of a sudden like the background turns white and you just see rose petals go by. Like, whoo. And he just like does this matrix wish. Like, almost like shoulder, still with his feet on the ground, shoulder to the ground as the saw just wishes over his head completely missing. Goes flying 90 feet off wherever, and it just stops. Yeah, so it's it probably just here. plunks into the wall. <laughs> Question is, the previous... Let's see, I guess with that it would destroy the saw, but are there still shards laying around if, if he's not dead before the, I have to do it again? From the previous one that I threw at him? I'll say there are probably an assortment of shards... Right around here. I just, rem just read that the object itself also takes the same bludgeoning damage when yeah. it hits. And these are very low in terms of durability. They're incredibly rusty. Alright, so I've used my movement and my action. I don't have any bonus actions. So. Alright, that means Jacoria, uh, you're up. Uh, well, I mean, he's right in my face, so obviously I'm going to try and hit him. Alright. Uh... So that is an 11. I'm presuming that does not hit. Nope. Uh, if that's the case, that's the end of my turn. All right, no bonus action? Nope. All Next. Right. Next up is Landron. Are you skipping again? He comes out of the corner screaming and tries to bite him in the thigh. 
Um, hold on. What's your movement? Thirty feet. Just within range. Just. Within... What do you like? I you got to roll to hit him, but you also got to roll. Wait, what? What's the damage type of piercing? Wrong. Probably piercing. Well, wait. I, actually, what is what the hell is the die you roll for that? I don't think. I th- I don't think. Yeah, I, I don't. Grapple? I don't get a die. I don't. Yeah, it's just it's one plus your strength mod for unarmed attack. Okay, we'll go with that then. Uh, I right, roll the hit. I suppose. What stat would you like me to use for this? Dex or strength? Strength. Alrighty. This should be absolutely glorious. That is a 15. That does not hit. I I have to get very high to hit this gentleman. I have to hit very high in D. Yes, you do. Alright, so you... I, I want... <laughs> yeah, it's just... Like, by, by all means, narrate. Alright, so you run in there like, ah! You know, all your, in all your cutesy, adorable kobold glory, you, you, you do this like, like, da 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 da, like, dive, like, a, worthy of like the, like an NFL touchdown. Unfortunately, just as you do that, not because he actually knows you're there, but because he just kind of moved. Like, he just moved his leg forward a little bit. And you miss. You slide face, uh, or snout, I should say, face, snout first onto the wooden hardwood floor. So hard that, in fact, your snout goes through the hardwood floor. You're not stuck, but you made a hole. And then you're going to give him a hand, guys. He's doing his best to help. <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, I assume that's your whole turn, Landry. <laughs> That's that's turn. All right. Uh, Wait a minute, I have to check. Uh, let me let me check the uh, casting time on this. <coughs> okay. Da, 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 da. It might be a bonus action. It's a bonus action. How close am I to you? Uh, let's see here. I am. Just, I, I'm ten feet away from from Drax, so not nothing doing. All right. Okay. So that means. That's Kiko's turn, yeah. What you wanna do, bird boy? You know what? Since I'm here, I'm also taking this trap. Right? So <laughs> you are check determined not to help. <laughs> he, he is uh He's just like in the ba- in the in the other room, you hear oof ah, 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 And then you're like hmm, I mean, the drapes. Coming. What should I steal next? The drapes? <laughs> The uh, rope, one, the one, chest one, itself. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know exactly the Bugs Bunny skit to a quote here. <clears throat> it's coitins for you, Digsby. Coitins. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're lovely. I actually, I actually have a reason for this. Okay. So um, I'm gonna run up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab the grab the rope and cut it really quick. Okay. At least, look, at least look inside the chest there. I already took the stuff from the chest. Yeah, you already. Oh, he's okay. pretty much looted the entire he, room. He's looted he's literally fighting. everything in the room. <laughs> I'm not clear. Is he taking the mattress, or? No, I'm not taking the mattress. No. The only thing I'm Thank God. Are you I, taking the kitchen sink? I don't want to have that argument about being a over and cumbersome in the bulk. Look, I take, the, I we all know. All right, so you cut down the uh, the the core the rope with the cans. Yes. I'm gonna like move towards Belisarius and I'm gonna toss him the, the string of cans. Okay. I'm gonna <clears throat> try to stay away from the fire at least. Okay. Then, so I'm gonna move to the sawmill. Yeah, like, thirty feet right on top of it. Yeah. If I can I like to move on top of the sawmill. Okay. So wait, so you wanna remove on top of the sawmill? Yes. Alright. That would be yeah, more like that. So, right. Then I'm gonna toss uh, Belisarius the cans. I'm gonna yell catch. <laughs> catch! Alright, so you throw the cans. Uh, I don't know if there's. 
Um, actually, would that be? A, okay. I don't know if I should make you roll something for that. Sleight of hand, perhaps, or uh, well, you're th- next. you're throwing it, so I'm. Uh, I'd see that as like an acrobatics thing. Acrobatics, you do acrobatics, I guess. I, I would have to roll Jose. something dex to catch. Uh, I'll only make one of you roll in this case. So, I'll, which one of you want want to? Uh, I'll, I'll kind of make it uh, up to. Well, since it's Kiko's turn, uh, he'll have to be the one to roll. If if he rolls yeah. good enough, I'll just assume you catch it. So, yep. Okay. Yeah. So you toss the cans. You got you know ninja precision, even though it's an awkward object with the the rope and the cans, and Belisarius. Instinctually catches it by reflex, and he's got it. I do have to high dex. <laughs> more ammo to throw with him. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, the way you guys are fighting him is so hilarious. The only one who's doing like traditional combat against this fucker <laughs> is Jacoria. Everybody else is like, "Hey, let's do this in the weirdest way possible." Like Bill Star is just throwing shit at him. <laughs> Landrin tried to bite him. <laughs> I'm out of spell slots. And up, and I up, just have magic weapons. And up to this point, <laughs> Jacor is the only one actually just doing straight up combat. Hey, hey, no I mean, shot. I've been playing this way for 20 years. That's all I know. I, I've been playing this way for 20 long years. I ain't about to stop now. <laughs> That's a fact. I, that is an absolute fact. That is beautiful. Run up and shiv him. Kill him with cans. Run up and shiv him. Kill him with cans. Which one will I pick? This is fun. <laughs> okay, okay. So that was I'm your just turn. For the YouTube comments. <laughs> I still have. I still got to finish Decoria's art. Like that's taken forever. Uh, by the way, just while I'm here, is that is he? I, I see in the Rule Twenty art he's red skinned. I thought he was blue skinned. Yeah, I just grabbed something just so okay. That it, so it he looked, is he is you know, blue skinned like, like like. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but, good. like, that's, like, the general look, you know, like, with the hood and the horns and everything like that. So I was like, oh, awesome. that, that that works. Fantastic. All right. So that is it for Kiko's turn. That means yep. it's the Walsh man's turn. And Actually, I also got to spread uh, the fire, which now spreads Would you, uh, would you do more? Because it's doubling. Uh, never mind. Yeah, I'm going to, it's also going to spread in multiple directions since. Why did I go closer to the fire? Why have I done this? D&D. Oh, the fire. oh, right. That's right, because I wanted to help. Oh. Because I wanted to help. Spread in multiple directions. All right. <clears throat> so, fire is starting, and the big boss man is... Didn't notice Landron even attack him, so I'm going to say he's still focused on Dracoria means he's attacking again with the scimitar. Let me roll to even hit before I start doing calculations. Uh, net 20? Uh, yeah, that hits. I mean, you know, there's not much you can do with that. Just checking. <laughs> Shot in the dock. <laughs> Alright, uh, that means... What do I need to roll? Right. Oh, I just need a 1d6. Of course, that's the one die I didn't prepare on the side. What? D6? I won't need that. I didn't need it last time. Need it? Damn it. So, do you roll 1D6 and double it, or do you roll 2D6? It says I roll 1D6, and it's... It says 3, 1D6, piercing damage. So, it's 3 plus the 1D6, so... Well, well, yeah, but it's critical, so that means it's double damage. Yep. That's, That's why I asked if you roll 1d6 or 2d6. Oh, I gotta roll 2. Um, Alright, so it, 3 plus the critical. Da, 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 da. So in previous editions, it was you would double the total amount of damage? On That's what I was about to do, but if I have to, I just rolled the second die if that's the 5e way. Yeah. No, 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 no. There, there is there, there, there. So five E doesn't have a rule. It gives you the option to roll one, double it, or roll two. Okay, that's I'll just I I'll roll. I'll roll one and double it. Cause that's how I've I've always done it. So three 
and I rolled a one, so four, then just double that, eight damage. Okay. That is absolutely manageable. All right. Um, he does have multi-attack, though. Uh, um, I you as a reaction, um, I cast Hellish Rebuke um, for receiving damage, uh, and he has to make a DC 13 dex save. If not, take uh, 3d8 fire damage. All right, what's the save I got to do again? D3 what? Uh, it's a DC 13 dex save. All right, so say that again, because you were echoing, because roll 20 all of a sudden started uh, catching your audio. Okay, so regardless, he's going to take 3d10 fire damage, Okay. Um, but he takes half if he makes a dc13 dex save. Okay. He does not make that. Uh, he takes 17 fire damage. 17, is that total damage, including everything? That's or? total, that is correct. Alright, and you said 17. Yep. I can do the math. Uh... Okay, that's a lot. Okay. Yeah, some of those tiefling abilities are a little... A little nice to have. Uh, that is really nice. You got him good. Uh, but that's that. That's a once a day thing. So you know. Oh, okay, so that's. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up a calculator because my brain's not wanting to do the math there. Okay, yeah, I'm just hoping it's enough to drop him, so I don't have to take that second attack because I really don't want that. He is still alive. Son of a bitch. <laughs> How are you looking on HP? That actually makes me. But happy because I get to kill him with cans. <laughs> I'll take that second attack, you son of a bitch. I mean, as long as it's not another crit that has the potential to do a ton of damage, I, I mean, I can, I can soak it. All right. So he's still good. So he's in a lot of pain, a lot of agony, but he's still, he's still in there. So he goes for his multi attack. But keep in mind, this is with disadvantage. So I got a roll to hit with disadvantage. Uh, I'm safely assuming seven doesn't hit, which was the, nope, it does not. the worst of the two rules. All right, so yeah, he goes for his multi-attack, but the pain, you know, you caused with that, uh, with your previous attack or reflex attack, it, it's just, at this point, he's like, I can't even lift the Simtar to try and slash out again. So he, he's, you know, he's, he's in a lot of pain. He's, he's really not feeling, he's not feeling it. Um... All right, so that is it for uh, that's it for Jacoria. That means Landron. Hello there. Right. Keep in mind, I don't have you officially in prone, so. Well, let's see. Let's see. I'd like to climb up his back. Climb up his. Um, to do what? <laughs> so I. Yeah, oh, fuck it. Um, roll, roll me, Dex. Dexterity. I am actually semi okay at that. What in God's name is that I'm coming out of? Does anyone else hear me roboting hard in someone's mic? Uh, you're not roboting I... for me. Nope, not for me. Not either. on mine. I'm echoing somewhere. Do you have yourself muted in roll 20? No. Well, that might be it. Uh, I shouldn't be I shouldn't be hearable in roll 20 though. I, 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 I just had to I just had to mute the corner, my so. uh, let's, let's try that. Uh, roll 20. Wait, the 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 echoing stop. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Anyway, um, so long as no one else hears it, I'm fine. Yep, yeah, you sound fine to me. Yep, sound fine to me. Alrighty, I am now going to roll that uh, dexterity check. Alrighty then. 18. 
Uh, Alright, so you get on his back. Uh, he he does not have the... Uh, he's not feeling... He's not feeling up to... Uh, real. He's really just not feeling it. Like, Well, he knows that you're on his back now, but the most he can do in the pain, wounded state that he is is just kind of shuffle a little bit, but you as small and light and lanky as you are, you, you jump on, and despite the, his minimal efforts to shake you off, you hold on. Did you just want to jump on him? By the way, keep in mind, now that you're on him, if you stay on him, if they throw cans at him, I'm going to have to have you roll a constitution save. I've made a terrible mistake. Or make to you, blackguard. <laughs> All right, so are you are you just like holding on to him? Are you trying to bite him? What are you doing? Yes, I'm going to try and bite him again. Okay. Uh, I would say since you're on him, roll with advantage. Oh, boy. I have a chance to actually... I I have to roll like an eighteen or something to hit this dude. <laughs> oh well, that's Is not going to do it. Does a two do anything? Nope. <laughs> oh wait, I already <laughs> had the advantage disadvantage thing on. Uh, I'll just go based on the first strength one you did, which was eight, and nope, that doesn't beat his. So, uh, yeah, despite being on him, he's shaking just enough where you, you, you can't quite get your, uh, your, your, uh, your snout jaw around any part of him. You're just, you know, a little bit dizzy almost. So you, you, you chomp out, but you went for his neck and he moved just enough that you, that you missed. I'm not going to be uh, in fisticuffs. This is not my realm of expertise. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm assuming that's your turn. I'm going to bonus action magic weapon on Dracorn's uh, scimitar, or whatever it is. Uh, well, what's the? Anyway. What's it again? It's a uh, magic. I'm going to magic weapon his rapier. Magic weapon. Is um, uh, does that work on already magic weapons? Never mind. I would say mm -hmm. no. I, I let's. I'm mistaken, you can't that's, double up. That's turn, then. And right. you could do mine, because if you're still on him and I can't throw cans at him, I'll have to shift. Well, you can, him. but you'll hit so Landron. Question or you'll, you'll have a is, chance to hit Landron. So I have improved path weapon, which makes my scimitar a magic weapon, but it's because of my evocation. So it's not, in theory, a real magic weapon. So I don't know how you want to do that. It's still considered a magic weapon. I would say, yeah. Uh, Okay. <clears throat> I, I'll, just, I'll just keep my useless little support hands to myself. Uh, okay. Oh, oh. Do, does magic weapon have a range on it? Uh, yeah, but I'm right next to you. Oh, you're, not, you're, say, you're not right next to Kiko. I say cast magic weapon on... Because uh, he's, he's on the platform where the saw is. No, I said, I, I said to Tiefling Boy, Tiefling Boy, but his thing's already magic, so I said, okay, never mind, that's turn. Yeah, that's, that's true. All right, so if that's turn, that means Kiko, you're up. Shoot him. Shoot him! I think he has a clear shot. Kiko, your yeah. assistance would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Run over and snatch Landron off of his back. <laughs> Um, I guess, I guess I could go ahead and pull out my, uh, my rapier. I'm gonna, like, run around the fire. Right. Yes, I'm just gonna run, I guess, right after the orc. Yeah, you're, uh, he's within your max distance, so, that yeah, boom. Murder sandwich, murder sandwich, murder sandwich. You guys, <laughs> yeah, you got... You got uh, Landron on his back. Keep that in mind. He's he's currently straddling him. So I'm guessing since we have like three people around this dude, I would get advantage. I will give you advantage, but I'll also have to have Landron roll. Uh, well, I'd say wouldn't that be Dex? Because he'd have to, I don't know, jump off or avoid your attack. Watch out, Landron! Don't get hit. Hope I don't roll two natural ones. Would be bad. <laughs> 19 to hit? Uh, that hits. Should I roll that deck save? Uh, yes. Oh, no. Dexterity. 
20. Yep, you, uh, you, alright, so he goes for the slash and you hop right off as you see it coming and you heard Kiko warn you, so uh, you are off of him now, you're not straddling him. So if anybody else wants to attack him after this, Landrin is now officially off of him. He takes five piercing damage from the rapier and seven piercing damage from the sneak attack. Uh, and that. Twelve damage, okay. Yep. He is so close to dead. Hit him right. with the cans. He is <laughs> alright, so <clears throat> he he with that pierce and that stab, he is da- he is bleeding, he is feeling agony, and he drops his weapons. He is just in so much pain. And he yells out quickly in common. I mean, yeah, never kill master. Victory has been achieved, gentlemen. All right, with the cans. So that it is now his turn. Uh, I would definitely argue he's wounded enough. He's not feeling to do up to doing a multi attack. Um. So since he's dropped his weapons, that's it, Mr. Cops. Yep. Uh, so he's dropped his weapons. He's gonna take a wild punch uh, at Dracoria, since he's still the one right in front of him, uh, which is just his strength, which is plus nothing. That's a two. No. <laughs> that does not happen. Nope. That's a fucking two. Uh, so he just takes a wild punch, totally flails, hits the ground again on his knees, just gushing blood. Uh, that's going to do it for his turn, because I'm going to say he's so wounded he is not up to doing a multi-attack. So he, he is, he's, feeling, he's feeling the end coming. Uh, all right, so that means, Belstarius, you're up. So where do I have to stand to have a clear shot to not hit? I would say Kiko. Oh, uh, hold on, I want to. I want to say something narratively real quick. Okay. As Landron drops, he is going to assume the table topping position behind him. <clears throat> Wait, what? <laughs> do you know that? Do you know when you kneel and get on your hands and knees so that when someone pushes someone backwards, they fall over? Oh, okay. So you're just gonna push him till he falls. So you're you're getting behind him and you're pushing him to the ground. No, you get behind someone. You get low. When they get pushed into you, they fall over backwards. It's basically douchebag friend number one, douchebag friend number two. One gets down, hands and knees behind your legs. Oh, friend okay. I see. I see. So you're you and- you're going prone with your back up. So if he's pushed forward, he'll fall. Yeah, it's called table topping. <laughs> Okay, I don't, I don't, I've never done that, so I don't know that. I hadn't heard the term, but I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about, I just, you know, likewise, I've never heard the term. The only time I, I just remember is because there's some all right, grappling so, techniques in here. Alright, so you got your back up. Uh, okay. So, um, so, calm down. Do you listen to Not Another D&D podcast by any chance? Me? What? Yeah, I thought so. What? Is that a dig? <laughs> No, that's I, where the table popping comes from. Ah, okay. I don't know this Marcus Falaf you speak of. I don't. Uh, lies! <laughs> lies! Tis, tis deception! <laughs> uh, we have fun here. We, 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 in, we enjoy our time, indeed. Uh, all right, so okay. it's still so I'm moving, moving into a line of sh- uh, a good line of fire directly behind. So it'll probably sail over. Yeah, you can move right there, and you'll have a clean shot. <laughs> yep. So I'm just standing right there. So basically, I drop the cans to the floor, and then I'll use my last spell slot for another catapult with the cans, all right. flinging it directly at his head. Another deck save. He has 19 for his deck save. Damn it. <laughs> How does he have that? He's so wounded. <laughs> no, I'm actually going to roll this advantage because he... He's 
mean, I I would say as heavily wounded as he is. How the fuck? I got a nat twenty as is a is the other roll, so the lower of the roll is nineteen. How the fuck does that happen? Uh, okay, so despite his extremely wounded state, the cans are he's just the cans are a part of him. He's a part of them. Like just he senses the cans. He cannot allow these, cans. these cans to betray him. <laughs> so he he just goes flat enough to the ground. They soar right over him and miss and clang against the box. Not my cans. Actually, no. He even says that in 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 goblish. I don't remember that voice line, by the way. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Okay, so that missed. Uh, got a got a bonus action. I don't believe I do. Oh fuck, that's funny. <laughs> All right, so if that's your turn, uh, Dracor- you guys stab him to death, I guess. Oh, can you? No, no, I said, no, I don't, I can't. I'm just okay, I'm telling going that. To I, was like, I guess you guys do it the boring way and stab him to death. All right, Dracoria, not a good, the tried and true stab to death. Okay, so <laughs> with this being said, three people around him, I get advantage, right? Yep, I'll give you okay. very much advantage here. All right, did that go through to, no, it did not. Um... So it rolled a nat in in roll twenty with a natural twenty. So do you want to count that, or do you want me to push over a new roll so that you you can see it in in, in roll twenty? Uh, I'll believe you. You said you rolled a nat twenty, so I'll I'll go with that. Um, all right. So we'll skip damage calculation because he's at three. So how do you want to do this? How do you want to kill him? You know uh, so what has to I, be done. I do, I do. So I know the tabletop has been established, and I'm going to say, it's time for you to die, you son of a bitch. And I stab him in the throat, and then I kick him in the chest so that he falls backwards, and he falls over... um, Landrin. uh, uh, Landris. He falls over Landris and just, just, you know, dies. One day someone's going to pronounce it right. Gush, just gushing. I've said Landrin correctly, I thought. Oh, Landry. Landry. I, uh, I apologize. But, you know, if, <laughs> you know, you kick him over. Landry does the, the table the tabletop position. He falls over him, gushing blood. And when he hits the ground, so with a thunderous crack. Just silence as his very last breath exhales. I don't mean to be uh, whiny down here, but his legs are crushing my tiny form. I'll kick his legs out of the way. Well, that fire's spreading pretty quick. Uh, I think we should probably beat feet and get out of here, grab the stuff, and make it back to um, the encampment. I don't suppose I could talk you into turning, getting off the call and coming back on really quick? Uh-oh. What? There, done. Like hey, it before worked. The fire, before the fire spreads too quickly, he goes going to run over to those chests and pop one open. Do uh, you mean the crates? The crates, yeah. right? Yeah. I think the ones that are in the chips and everything. That's probably to give him his corpse. There you go. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and take care of the looting before uh, the entire place is engulfed in fire. Yeah, I'm going to check that dude's body. Alright. Uh, well, uh, what should we do first? We'll do, we'll do the body check first, but you said you're going to check the crates, so we'll put you yes. there. Um, alright, so um, you... I hand you my crowbar, just in case you don't have one. Uh, thank you. No, I have two crowbars. Well, Various. I want that back. Actually, wait, no, no, I have three crowbars. You just gave it to it. You just gave it <laughs> to the bird thief. <laughs> it's like, crowbar? What crowbar? You never handed me a crowbar. <laughs> Mine. Meh. <laughs> Quah, quah, it's they mine now. Quah. What is what is he like? Literally, just a crow who just like who collects shiny things just because he likes them. That's yeah. That I mean, that's I essentially what Kenku are. Yeah, they they're they're natural born rogues and thieves, and businessmen apparently, as I read their lore. Yes. 
So they're also very good merchants. Yeah, we're very well, good shady at You know goblins from WoW? Like the the businessmen, like the, the entrepreneurs and thieves and rogues. Ferengi. Ferengi. You know, they're kind of like that, but like <laughs> slight. Ferengi. They're like more dignified. <laughs> I'd say they're like more dignified, that kind of personality. Like they're more dignified Ferengi, I guess. Like they're, they're dignified thieves. No. Well, it depends on what law of commerce you're following. True. <laughs> I said, like I said, they, they're more dignified. I didn't say they were dignified, just by this comparison. Is the, one. the rules of acquisition. That's it. it the rules of acquisition. <laughs> I follow the sixty-nine. Hey. Hey. <laughs> All right. So uh, you said you're uh, you're looting his body, right? Yeah, the big dude. Yeah. All right, so um, on his body, obviously, you see the wooden shield, which is now a little bit damaged. Uh, you also see the scimitar. Uh, but as for, like, his pockets or his, uh, what he has on him, he has a small sack. Uh, like uh, the other goblins that you've looted so far, he has he had a sack of uh, loot on his side in a small gold pouch. Uh, sorry, in a small leather pouch. And in it, you see about what uh, you find about 20 gold pieces, 30 silver, 10 copper. Um, well, I've already made out like a bandit and the rest of these guys don't know. So I'm going to say, Hey, this is for the community. Um, we did a good job and I'll, I'll pass that out. Uh, and then I will take that scimitar as well. All right. So you take the scimitar. Gotcha. And you dole out, I'll let you guys dole out in between you, like the proper number. So yeah. Uh, I say you should probably save it until get back to do all stuff yes so you're gonna give it to somebody to hold or? yeah i was like considering we're in a burning building all right uh, uh i'd like to interject and request that we uh depart the premises swiftly swiftly um, before we... <laughs> i uh, can i can agree with that all right, kiko you still want to check the crates Loot. all right so you do i need to have you well, they they are nailed shut. They are nailed down, so you are gonna need the crowbar. Um, yeah, I, have, I have three of them now. Would that be a strength or a dex? Um, that would be a strength check, and it would be at at advantage because yeah. he has a crowbar. Right. All right. So roll me strength. Sixteen. And that and that's with advantage. Yes, that's with advantage. Okay. So yep. Uh, you successfully pry open. Uh, I'll say that works for like any of the crates you want to open. So you see, if we pry open the larger and smaller crate in the larger crate, you see uh, just a small, a, a small assortment of tools, but in there, there's also a short sword. Oh no. No. Is it perhaps one of the caravan short swords? Does it look like they're made? It definitely looks newer than the other, uh, tools around. If you want to roll investigation and give a more precise answer. Um, forget that. I'm taking the short sword. Okay. Uh, Wait, did you say short sword? Yes, yes, it's a short sword. I'm going to hold it up. It's like that, that Zelda... Uh, da, 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 da. Yes. Da, 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 da. You found the Kikori sword. I can appreciate that. I but, found the um, sword. But yes, I'm just going to like do a real quick thorough check up, see if there's anything else in there. If there's anything at all. All right. I need to get it out of here before it. Uh, so in this, uh, so like I said, other than that short sword in that larger crate, there's basically nothing. It's just a bunch of tools, some old saws, some other junk. None of it is apparently valuable or new. Uh, you'd say at best, the rest of it all together, if you sold it as a pile of junk, would be worth just that. Probably be thirty copper okay. at best, yeah, so and it's not really it's worth the weight. The smaller uh, and the smaller crate there has just uh, old wood chippings. It was, uh, it's a uh, it's a crate that hasn't been disturbed by the goblins since uh, the old lumber guys were there, and they just stashed some old uh, chippings in there that they used to, you for kindling for firewood and such. Yeah. So now we should check the other crates and then get out of here. All right. As you guys are checking, though, I do gotta spread the fire, and now yeah. it's really. It's really going to start taking up, though, because that dry, old, dead wood catches pretty pretty strong. 
I'll take uh, my crowbar back and I'll bang out one of the the ones that are in the uh, the western side of the the mill. All right. So are both you and Kiko going over there, or yes, okay, I'm sure. going over there. All right, only one of you's going. Because I thought your Cor- I thought your Corey said he was going as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, and I'm assuming Belisarius and Landron are yep, bailing. I'm gonna head out of right. the room. So right. I'm gonna go check on my Eldridge cannon and all the pile of loot. Right, yeah. So I'll just assume you guys are in the main camp. So we'll do this first before we move everybody out. All right. So uh, I'll just go based on your previous roll of 16 to pull this open. Which succeeds, you get both open. In the smaller one, you see uh, two of those same small barrels uh, you saw in the uh, goblin boss's chest. Uh, these both are like the lighter one, though. They're both like one pound each. Uh, I'll grab one and pass the other one to uh, my my furry friend there. Yep. Feathery friend Feathery. there. Uh, and in the larger crate, uh, you see... Some clubs, short bow, uh, sh- some short bows, and some arrows. Uh, I will snag that sh- short bow and arrows, however many there are. Uh, it's 120 arrows. Yeah, I'll take that. Right. Uh, so you acquire those, and I'm assuming you're leaving everything else? If there's nothing else of value. Uh, nope. It's just all scrap. So everything else is just scrap, old junk. That's it, we're, we're out. Alright. Too bad we can't take the mattress. <laughs> <laughs> As we leave, we, uh, the, the sad dead goblin holding on to his little string of cans as a fitting funeral. We, s- we have saved a day wait, for wait, wait, a building wait, wait. burning take, around here. Did we take his scimitar? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I took it. Okay, okay. That's because like, no one said I'm taking it. Hold on, I'll save the well, line. Somebody, if somebody... If somebody needs the scimitar, I will gladly give it to you. Oh, um, no, if not, I'm selling it. For a fair price, of course. <laughs> As we're all standing around in this burning down lumber camp, Landron will just look around like, we did it, gentlemen. We saved the trade route. <laughs> we did it. We saved everyone. <laughs> we saved the city, Patrick. <laughs> Save the trade route. Save the trade route, my character says in uh, Landry's voice. Right, so each of you towards the center of the camp. I, I couldn't notice, but you rather dramatically held up a rather magnificent looking sword earlier. Oh, it's just a basic short oh, sword. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, if you want something a little bit more fancy, and and I hold out the falchion, which is not the falchion, scimitar, which is probably as close to being as big as the cobalt is. Yes, Horrible. but the, the short sword also is. Remember, he's, he's uh, two gonna... feet tall. That would still be like a great sword to him. I'm gonna pull the, the short sword. I'd like to pull that pile of loot that's next to the goblin, that's next to the burning building, away. Oh, all the loot was. Stash over here, there was some over there, so you're grabbing that as well. Alright, yeah, so I'm chunk that over. Alright, so you want to put it with the rest, or just like hold yes. on to it? Alright, putting up the rest. Alright, so that's all that loot. So, mm-hmm. so just to recap okay. with the loot that's here, it's the barrel full of the black powder, uh, which by the way, Bell Stars, you still haven't, at least you haven't told me you've told the rest of the, the group about it, so are you all going to convene here about all this stuff, or... Alright, uh, I don't bother telling everyone what it is. I just shoulder it and without saying another word. Right, and is no one going to inquire about it? And you guys can feel free to discuss all the junk you found, rum- rummage through it individually. You know. I, I did write mine down for such a purpose, actually. Okay, Lan is going to climb atop the teeny little pile and exclaim... Well, uh, during the investigations prior to our... Um, he looks over at the f- burning fucking inferno. Uh, final length of the expedition uh, discovered upon our opponents and in their possessions uh, two gold coins, several arrows, as seen here, this short bow, and... Uh, where's my papers for ruffling? 
I found this interesting little communique from the Southern Islands addressed to uh, some of the people in our little group back at the back in the uh, caravan, as well as is a, a goodly stack of deeds and whatnot. Also, several belong to uh, the caravan we were traveling with. So, uh, Kiko's going to reach uh, their hand out. Oh, he's going to hold it out so he can examine it. Okay. So here you are. Uh, examine which thing in particular? Uh, the yeah, my... letter? Yeah, specifically right. the letter. Uh, Alright, so you guys still haven't opened it, right? Yes. Okay, so you're just looking at the outside envelope and the seal. Uh, you want to roll me investigation? Sure. And do you have any reason why your character would have an advantage in this role? Like, is he nope. by chance from the Southern Islands in any of these? Roll three. And you rolled a three. Three. And that's with all your... Okay. Um, it's only it's an envelope. And there's a thing on it that looks like a seal. Who's it addressed to? Uh... Uh, as you go, well, uh, uh, I can't talk my tongue. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm having one of those moments. <clears throat> it's addressed to Boric Halfheart, who is the guy who is the dwarf merchant at, in charge and leading the caravan of merchants you guys were guarding. He's also your employer. Yeah, we never met him. He was off scouting. No, uh, you guys haven't met him officially, other than his just. Uh, the only time you guys have quote unquote met him is when he quickly uh, basically signaled you guys off the road in each of your turns and offered you the job which you all accepted and for various reasons. Either some of you just wanted to travel in a group, some wanted to use the group as camouflage others actually did want the pay from the job Like Vlandron I was like, Kiko's gonna pull out a knife and like, I'll put it up to the seal and just like look around at everyone else. Um, uh, Kiko, I might want to uh, remind you rather swiftly that that matter is probably quite confidential. Mm. You're gonna open up the letter. Just pull it out. Are you gonna open up the letter? All right. Yep. That's all. So you pull open the letter, and it's written in common. Uh, do you read it for the group or read it for yourself? Uh, I'm going to read it to the group to the best of my ability. All right. <clears throat> so It's going to sound like I'm talking in like five different voices. Whatever I'm reading it, though. Five different voices? Yeah, it's like every every like couple of, uh, of words, it changes to a different voice. All righty. <clears throat> the uh, letter isn't an extremely long letter, but from what you uh, can read, it says the following. <clears throat> Dear Bora Calfheart, greetings, my old friend. I understand it that you're traveling to Nordred, and in particular Northholm. There I would like you and your merchants to set up a shop. Soon we will be uh, importing more and more weapons and armor, uh, which we intend to sell to the locals. As I understand, the political unrest in Nordred is uh, going to be quite profitable for all of us. I'm sure you agree. We will be selling these weapons, as I, recall, uh, as I will remind you, to both the governing body of the nation and to the potential rebels that, are com that seem to be arising out of the unrest. This will be quite profitable, my friend. This will be quite profitable. Yours truly, Argus Fingley. Southern Isle no, Trading Company. Well, I never. I'm gonna give Landon a sly look. If, if you could see a bird smile, this would probably be a. He's practically vibrating in rage at your smugness. <laughs> vibrating with rage, tiny two feet of rage. Uh, do you, uh, there is a second, uh, sheet of paper in there as well. Do you want to look at that? Sure. Right. The second sheet of paper that was underneath the first is a deed 
to a uh, to another piece of property, not in Northholm, the main city of Nordred, but in like a northern forest area. Uh, <clears throat> not like a lumber mill property, but just like a plot of land. And it's uh, it's in the name of Bora Calfhart. Can you say that again? You kind of cut out for me. Oh. Opportunity. Right. I would say we have, we have a, like all these deeds, right? It's like it'd be a shame if they just never got back to the caravan and no one knew about them. Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be a shame if they also happened to just, you know, lose their signatures eventually? I, I think that uh, despite uh, their absolute deplorable lack of any sort of scruples, simply robbing them blind of such documentation might not be within our interest. They don't need to know it was us. I think well, we should probably turn this information over to the authorities. Well, let's not get hasty. They're intent on aiding the rebellion. Worse, that would be a far worse situation. So whether they even are, not jamming with us. Whether hey. they are aiding the rebels or not, uh, we are common citizens. Um, <clears throat> we don't understand the political landscape of what's happening right now. Rebels could be good. The old stronghold could be good. We don't know. Um, so I would like to propose, um, Kiko, so I hear what you're saying, and I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. I think the method that you proposed would be a bad idea. I think it would be smarter if we brought this to their attention under the guise that we are well aware of what's going on and that we would prefer a partnership opposed to trying to strong arm them into a position that would put us in uh, a disadvantage. They don't need to know we have anything. As far as they know, little fire over there, it's all lost in it. That's true. And then we show up and we have their land and then all of a sudden, you know, that's rather obvious, wouldn't you say? Mm. I, say they I, I mean, there's clear flaws in your plan, so maybe we should take a different tactical approach. Well, I mean, I, just I, mean, I already with... called it once on the elite goblins. Let's see if I'm two for two. Yeah, say so I'm gonna, I... I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold up the uh, the uh, note that's uh, that uh, the re the uh, evidence note about the rebels and stuff, like. So they don't need they don't need to know we own anything if they're locked away. I'm so God. I, say, I can't God can't instruct you on any of this. Okay. So <laughs> they don't need to know until we get into town. And even then they don't need to know it was us. So just as a matter of curiosity, I wasn't paying attention. Um, did you have to break the seal on that letter, or was that oh. seal already broken? He broke, broke it. He I broke it. Seal. So a lot of the information that we just uncovered is already unknown to all interested parties other than the gentleman that has procured the land, procured the weapons, procured all the stuff, and is willing to do business with um, – I, I forget the merchant's name, but we we know who we're talking Boric. about here. Uh, if I yeah. his full name, yeah. Borak. Oh, so, so the idea there is a lot of use of as you know in there. Yeah. Oh, so the idea is is we go back to the caravan. We give them the weapons. We give them uh, everything that pretty much they don't let us have, and we say that if there was anything else, it might have been lost in the fire. That. that, that we're gonna, but this is what we're gonna tell them that we got. Like this is everything we recovered, or we're able to recover. If they ask, 
about any papers, deny it. So. Yeah, I'd just like to point out that we're contemplating cooperation at the very least with, well, obvious and clear foreign intervention into domestic matters. I'm not even from here, and I don't jive with that. No, we're stopping the foreign powers from interfering here. This is our opportunity of a lifetime. I would say we put the matter to a vote. And what would the vote be? Uh, tell them, don't tell them, I'm assuming. So, all in favor of all in favor of telling them, say aye. Define telling them. Do like are we siding with the rebels here or are we siding could with you please hand, could, could you please hand me the letter a moment so I can cast mending upon the seal so it looks like it was never opened? You know what, fair enough. Yeah, I'll I'll hand him back the the letter and the. All right, you uh hand you hand Landrin back the the seal, <clears throat> and uh, you attempt to cast mending. Correct, Landrin. Yes, I'm going to repair the seal. The seal is magical. So that's what the detect magic was doing. Yep, it uh cannot be remended. In fact, you sense that it's uh the seal the the what you assumed is wax actually is beginning to fade away and leave uh, leave a marking in its place. It's, uh, it's an old rune <laughs> marking. Uh, I don't know if anyone here knows uh, Dwarvish. Uh, I would check, check my known languages. I uh, that's a negative. Fuck. I never, picked, I never picked my languages. Shit, I have Draconic in common, but I didn't pick the Sage one. Wait, we have comprehend languages within our party somewhere. Yeah. Right. Gonna, uh, fuck it. I'm gonna spend my uh, my last second level spell slot to cast comprehend languages. And comprehend languages does allow you to understand it, correct? It's not just mimic. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, so, I'm the one who mimics things. Okay. Okay. We're just double checking. All right. So when you uh, cast comprehend languages, uh, the rune uh, basically mean uh, the the rune means liar or deceiver. It's a marking to sh uh, to signify that someone other than Boric has opened the letter. Hmm. So if he does ever get this envelope, he knows you. He will know for a fact that it wasn't just accidentally opened, it was intentionally done. You opened a, you opened an absolute Pandora's box upon us, Kiko. Look at what you've fucking done. He doesn't even need to know this letter exists anymore. It burnt in that fire, as far as we're concerned. All in favor of bringing this to, I don't know, the local nobility, someone of authority, say aye. 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 Okay, that's two eyes. So do you guys choose to return back to the caravan, travel with them uh, to the nearest village, and then do that, do that? Or are you guys going to break away from the caravan altogether? Um, see. I actually have a clarification question before we move off of this topic. All right. Um, the rune, um, is it possible to identify if that rune specifies who actually is the one that opened it, or if it just says it does somebody not, else opened it that shouldn't have? It does not specify who. It merely states okay, that so someone in other has words, the goblins were the ones that opened it. You could definitely make that uh, that that uh, statement. We could, but that would require a lot of explaining. I would bet. We could always just confront them. That's what I was originally proposing. Well, yeah, but and I will I will them. remind you guys that the merchants aren't warriors. There's a reason they hired you guys to protect them. They have basic knowledge of how to fight, but they're not. They're not fighters at heart. They'd only do so to save, to protect themselves and each other. Yes. They're, they're so, not killers. So here's my idea. Like These guys are trying to smuggle arms into the city, right? 
and like give them to whatever rebel group, right? Are they smuggling? They're, they're, they're trying to sell to both sides. Well, they're attempting I mean, to that's just, what any to good just arms master does. Well, I mean, they're I'm not going to knock a guy for trying to be a good businessman. You, of all people, should understand that. Hey, I'm being a good businessman and taking my opportunity when I see it. I absolutely agree you are. Because, hear this out. Whatever, like, if these guys are trying to sell to whatever rebel cell there is here, then... We should, like, would would you rather would you rather side with a caravan full of rebels that may or may not actually have any wealth or give us anything, or would you rather side, or would you rather turn these guys in and perhaps get a much bigger bounty out of this? And and hear this out: we'll get fame in the city if we put down these rebels. I care not either way, so long as I get to use my skills and kill some meat bags, whether they be noble meat bags or rebel meat bags. True hey. neutral there. Say, so, you know, I'm I'm beginning to feel like some of the suspicion they were throwing around is more out of a sense of paranoia than any actual suspicion. That's entirely possible, but like all these documents or stuff, like they don't. They don't need to know we have any of this. It's not like they can take it if they did. That too. But it's less complicated, and we'll probably get paid after this. So, for the sake of brevity, why don't we just sit on it for the time being and do a little bit of investigation as far as Q&A with the merchants, try and get a feel for who they are, and what their potential end goal may be, and then we'll make the decision thereafter. I have a slight extra idea. What if, say, the three of you pretend to not have any sort of idea about any of these documents, documentations or not, and only I act as if I have seen the letter or what have you? And try and gauge their reactions as they are confronted upon it. Uh, I think that might be a little bit too direct. I'll say because they don't al- they already don't like you. <laughs> That's nice. Yes. So they already we're don't we're like not- you. <laughs> we're yeah. we're we lose nothing then. Worst comes to worst, I can run away. Perhaps. But now you're not going to get paid for being at the caravan. That's the price I pay for attempting to bring some sort of resolution to this problem, then I suppose so be it. Let's do it more covertly first. That's what you three three playing dumb is for. No, I think what I think what he's saying, I think uh, what he's saying is, uh, as in like you can try your way, if the uh, Q and A, like feeling the waters, questioning doesn't uh, reveal anything. Yes, that's that's pretty much it. So, kind of both your plans, if one doesn't work out. I was like, it, it also depends on what we uncover as well, because if we find out that this is like some kind of guerrilla group. Okay, I'm just saying, whenever Eisenhorn tries this, he ends up strapped to a table. It, it's an Inquisitor joke, don't worry about it. Oh, oh, I see. Gotcha. 40k. Gotcha. He tries to be stealthy yeah. about it. Okay, well... To be fair, that is 40k. But we have... We have a golden opportunity right here to get rich quick off of this. And even if, even if this, uh, how do I say this? Kiko, why does money seem to be the only thing on your mind? Shiny. Sh- shiny. The birds shiny. like the shiny. <laughs> <laughs> like my, uh, 
Okay, out of, out of character real quick. My character's end goal is to get paid. Kiko, I want you to open your mind to some philosophy with me. And practicals and theoreticals, I like to call them. Here's a practical. You, a person, is more likely to get paid if they are seen as trustworthy. A trustworthy person has an easier time getting work. Ergo, the more trustworthy you are, the more you get paid. Would you like to, would you not like to with, come with me and try and build up your image as a trustworthy person that you can always rely on, that you should always bring your work to, your paying work to? That's why, that's why, hear me out. We stay trustworthy until we get to town. And then... I don't think you understand to, what trustworthy means, my other we, friend. When we talk to the guards, we'll be trustworthy oh, to the guards and we won't have to worry me. about the caravan. Uh, uh, practical. Why, in God's good earth, did I leave the tower? I just wanted to write a book. I just wanted to write my thesis. <laughs> well, you're gonna have yeah, plenty to plenty to to write and to talk about now. And I bend down and give him a hearty slap on the back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you guys want to do? So I, I think we're all kind of in agreement that we are going to hang tight on presenting the information. Um, as far as anything after that, uh, I believe it's still kind of open to discussion and debate. Right. Um, but since we have quite a walk back to the caravan, hopefully they're still encamped there. Uh, potentially the conversation can continue as we travel back. All right. Um, one thing I will remind you of, guys, uh, real quick, is those small barrels uh, that uh, Kiko you found in the chest. Yep. Um, I will remind you that you haven't told the group about those, and you haven't looked at them either inside them. Oh, so, uh, I don't. If you would like to, re if you'd like to hold off on doing that, you can. I'm just yeah, reminding. I'm just reminding you that you have them. I would like to actually uh, tell the party about what I found. Okay. Like since we're since we're here and we have all the loot, we should go ahead and divide the loot. I'm so, legitimately not comfortable with the fact that being honest would have kind of fucked us. Jeez. Uh, you know, I really shouldn't have brought the letter out. It, it, we we would have been helping some pretty immoral motherfuckers otherwise, but I really shouldn't have brought the letter out. Why? Are you saying that out of character or in character? Yes. This is... Okay, send it both. Okay. No, no, I'm saying out of character. Okay, out of character. Oh, this is a golden opportunity I, for us. I cannot spoil anything for you guys. I will simply say, do not be too sure about your assumptions. I mean, it looks pretty cut and dry. The dude wants to make a uh, pretty earnest profit by selling to everyone involved. Yes, but it's the other details. Yeah, about the rebel stuff. This guy's helping well, rebels. I haven't yeah. made any assumption about the rebels. I know nothing about any sort of rebellious There's, there's, there's other things I, I'm referring to about not being sure about, but I, again, I'm trying to be vague, so... We, we don't even know if there is any sort of rebellious force that has officially taken up any sort of arms. I mean, all they said was political instability. That's it. Sounds like rebellion to me. Whether or not whether or not the people know about it or not, that's entirely different. Keep in mind, you can but... also, if you choose to return back to the caravan, or you choose a town, either way, you can always ask the locals about the, this political upheaval. Learn more exactly. about it and make more, make some decisions based off of that info as well. Actually, Actually can wait. we walk and talk? Unless one of you want to roll in, uh, intelligence, and uh, if you also have yeah. the argument for it, you can also make the argument that you know about the political intrigue, and I can. Uh, I'd like to get there at some point today. Uh, can I make like a history check or like a straight intelligence check? Um, you can you can make a history check. Uh, that uh, that would also help. Uh, yes, I would. I'll, I'll leave it up to you which you would prefer to do. Would you like to, you know, background info or? Well, I did history, so. Okay. I heard oh, wait, the, hold on. The thing dang. 
I don't know um, what window two. I was in. There it is. Uh, I got a two, so I'm presuming... No. You don't know jack about the history of Nordred. I'll roll two on history and 15 plus... Four. Let's see, on history, I think I get five, so 20. 20? All right. So, Bellstars, you are very familiar with the history of Nordred. Uh, Nordred is uh, the... I'm trying to try the briefest way to describe this. Uh, Nordred is an ancient kingdom that was founded 2,000, 3,000 years ago. Um, the nation was founded by a lycanthrope who actually developed a technique to maintain his uh, sanity and, con- and uh, control of himself whilst in his animal form. Or half-animal form, I should say. Uh, <clears throat> his name uh, before Finding the Kingdom is not known, but he changed it to Wolfric, which is, uh, in the ancient tongue, men wolf or man-wolf. And that became his official on nomenclature. When he founded Nordred, he obviously named the nation that, and he named the uh, capital city that he began to build on his own initially, Northholm. Over the course of hundreds of years and more and more people, for various reasons, mostly escaping uh, wars and, uh, and upheavals and just finding, wanting to find a new start, found their way to the northern continent uh, that Nordred is founded on. And they begin to, began to build the nation. Uh, over the course of a thousand plus years, his family continued to be the royal family. Uh, they were the, the kings, the queens that continued to ma- uh, maintain everything. And even other were creatures, he, uh, the, their, their, the royal family continued to actually pay people to capture uh, were, uh, were different were creatures and bring them to the nation. And they would actually use their techniques to teach or, uh, what's the word? Um, ah, what's the word? Uh, Tame or train or... No, it's a specific word. Uh, well, effect- effectively, <laughs> they made them sane again. Still in that half-animal form, unable to transform back, but they were controlled to themselves. And over the course of many years, uh, mul- with multiple where uh, where peoples uh, also coming to the nation, many of them either became citizens who just developed their own life there over time, or in the majority case, quite a few of them became lords themselves. Not just because they were were creatures; that's just coincidental. Um, but because over the course of time, uh, a lot of them who were turned, who were given their sanity back, began to manifest their own noble houses that served under the royal family, each one headed by a were creature, were person, <clears throat> and which leads to the modern day. The king, the last line of Wolfric, recently passed and died. He uh, had be- bore no sons that is known of. He had no wife, no queen to, uh, to his counterpart. Uh, the only thing he had was a sister, and she is not viable for the throne because she, uh, when she was a young child, was labeled a witch. Not solely because she had the ability to cast magic, but because the magic she cast in particular was considered uh, dark and necrotic and evil. So uh, they determined her cursed. So she, along with her mother, who elected to leave with her, uh, disappeared from the capital, leaving just the king and his only son. His only son grew up, became the king, and bore no heirs. As of now, the uh, what is known of the uh, sister of the king is that she is simply somewhere still in Nordred, that she never officially left with her mother to any other nation. She's believed to still be there somewhere. Either maybe she's hiding amongst the populace of Northholm, maybe she's uh, a witch in some evil... Uh, shed somewhere. There's all kinds of rumors and superstitions and stories about her over the last 20 years that she would have grown up. Uh, But that being the case, the king, having passed, the authority of the nation was passed to the Lord Regent, uh, his second in command, his royal advisor, uh, uh, Rolo Lionel. Rolo Lionel is, shocker, is a were-lion. He has taken the throne, he's taken the throne 
but only as a representative. He's he's a steward. For the you remember, uh, what well, fuck? What's the guy's Denethor. name? Denethor. He's basically that. He's he's filling in for the king until the right heir comes to the throne. Uh, well, the, they're not giving up to despair. I hope. Uh, you don't know. There's many different rumors about Rollo. Uh, there are some who say he's the noble lion who led the king in the best way he could, and when the king died tragically, he mourned for days and nights, and it's not it's not known whether he ev- ever stopped mourning the loss of the king, who he considered his closest friend, and much like a uh, pupil in many ways. Uh, it's also known that the king did, when it came to public speaking and re- referencing Rollo, he always spoke of the man in high regard often almost like an uncle. Uh, now, it is good, important to note that though Rollo is considered the official voice of the king at the current moment, he, he does still have to uh, report or serve under the noble houses, all who have a certain level of authority as well, under a new council which was formulated after the king's death, known as the Council of Geist, or Weregeist. Another nickname for it is Lunageist. It's a somewhat cheeky joke the populace make uh, in reference to the moon and them all being were, uh, were creatures. It's uh, derogatory, in a way. So they're the Luna guys. It's rad as fuck for derogatory. Yep. So... Oh, it actually sounds really cool to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the local, local people are very much torn when it comes to Rolo, let alone the council. The council is typically viewed out more positively by the people, since, again, it's multiple voices from the multiple nobles who each have their own uh, realm and specialty where they uh, where their nobility lies. Some of them are heads of, like, the Royal Navy and fishermen, and they handle the, the shores. Some handle the forestry and uh, the ranger corps who go about and tra- traverse the, the forests and make sure monster populations are kept in check and also make sure there's no one sneaking in the, uh, into the kingdom through uh, obscure ways in the forest. You know, each, each noble has their, their role to play outside of just being rich nobles. So the Council of the Geist is, is seen in a positive light. However, the, the, the reason there's such strong political upheaval at the moment is because it is tradition, or at the very least, it was when the when the kingdom was very first formed, and this rule was never rewritten because it was never considered a concern since generations of Wolfric's line continued uninterrupted. Nobody ever thought to fix this rule, but Wolfric himself noted in, in ancient past that if he should die and leave no heirs, the Lord Regent, after a whole year of his death, if no one else was found suitable. And the Lord Regent himself uh, found no one he thought was worthy, and the other nobles didn't find anybody who was worthy. He would be officially uh, be labeled the king. No longer Lord Regent, no longer former Lord Regent even considered. He would just be the new king, and his heir and his line would rule forever. So right now, that's why a lot of people are con- in the kingdom are convinced that Rollo killed the king. That he did it because he wants not only though Rollo is old, he's an older he was older than the king was by far. He's in his late fifties. He's a much older man. And though a lot of the loyalists of the kingdom claim that, you know, not only did the king love Rollo as an uncle, but he's also an old man. Why would he wait he why would he wait so long to end the, the royal line? Why would he why would he do this? It doesn't make sense. He his family has served the royal family for so long and all right, real quick uh, cut in here, guys. Some very important piece of information that I thought I included in the spiel here that wasn't is that the the king, uh, in terms of what the public has been told, died uh, in his sleep. One day he was perfectly healthy, perfectly fine, no signs of illness, no signs of uh, a weary behavior. Just went to bed one day and missed his early morning meeting. And Rollo himself supposedly went and to check on the king and to wake him up for his uh, morning responsibilities and instead found him in his chambers deceased. That has been what the public has been told, that is the extent of what they've been told, and because no more information has come out, no no, uh, mages apparently have done any major autopsy, nothing else uh, seemingly has been done to explain the king's mysterious death, has led even more to the rising political upheaval. It's the lack of explanation that is really igniting people on top of everything else.
they they also are nobles, so it's not like he needs to be king to live a comfortable life. But the re the more rebellious voices, they're louder. They're much more vicious. They say it's too convenient. It's too it, it, it's it's too perfect. The young king who never had a chance to find the right person magically dies before he can have uh, before he can find a spouse and and, and sire and heir, and he conveniently dies under the watch of Rolo. It's it's thing and the council is completely at a at a deadlock at choosing someone else to take take charge. Some support uh, Rolo as becoming king and therefore don't want to vote on anybody else, and some want to be king or queen themselves as well. So they're in a deadlock, and if it remains so for another six months, the throne will be uh, Rolo's. And as for public speaking on the matter, uh, this is the last bit of information I'll say until you're all cut up. Is uh, it's not Rolo has not spoken once to the to the local populace since the king's death. Other representatives of the council have spoken on his behalf, but he has been silent on the matter. That's another reason why people are getting even more agitated. It's like the guy's being officially quiet. So that's that's the current situation in Nordred. Cough, cough. Longest record since the. Uh since to a state of the union address in u.s history cough cough my apologies for being so long i i i, I worked so hard i'm sorry i worked so hard on that i, I i'm sorry i i thought that was interesting I'm, i you could say it was speaking from my mouth who doesn't understand social cues so you asked i know the history i came here because of the instability because i thought it would likely to get military service to test out siege equipment and various weapons and devices that's why I'm here. Okay. Devices. So you asked, and then you got an earful. Shall we head back to the cap camp then, gentlemen? I have, uh... I'm sorry. I have one more thing to add on. God damn it. <laughs> it's important. I have, a uh, Criminal speciality. Um. Uh... Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm holding back the tears. What? <laughs> I worked so hard on that. I enjoyed I it. it. I appreciate it. It was nice. But um, given that I do have a background as being a criminal, would I perhaps have heard rumors about this, about a perhaps brewing insurrection? Uh, can you roll me... Intelligence with Advantage? With advantage, right. advantage and intelligence. With advantage, it's a six. <laughs> um, you Chinese. have you you've you know before you came to Nordred, you did ask around here and there like about it, but people kind of shrugged you off. Even confidants in the underworld, uh, it, it appears that there's not a there's not that much information you were able to derive. It's uh. You know that there's definitely upheaval. You know that there's definitely people who are angry, but you don't know for a fact that there's any rebel groups or anything like that's officially formulated. Mm, well, uh, I'm just going to assume that they're at least trying to form, given what we found. And it uh, would be a shame if these people find themselves behind bars if they're butting in on my turf. That's it. Alright. So is the party Alright, so just to recap, yes. you guys the are answer is yes, the party is going. Alright, so you guys are gonna head back to the caravan. Uh do you guys want to take this time to take a quick break? Um how much uh, how much longer does everybody have to actually play? Is anybody expecting to I'm going to keep playing until either church starts tomorrow morning or the heat death of the universe. Come on, which is it gonna be? <laughs> One last thing, though, before we go back into camp, right. I would I would like to have the documents on me, if that's possible, so I can hide them. Uh, you already, uh, Landron already handed you the letter, so that just leaves the deeds, which you have most of them. 
I thought Landrin had them still. Yeah. That Landrin had them. And no one's questioned Land- the barrel of questionable materials. I know, I've been wondering why no one's questioned that, but I guess the letter was more <laughs> attention dragging. Um, yeah. I, I wrote here that Kiko had most of them. But the only one I wrote that yeah, Landrin had, I, I I had was... One. Okay. Oh, you had a deed. Okay, well, I had okay, the well, deed. I'll, I had a bunch of, I had a bunch of papers from the desk inside. Yeah, which had some more of the deeds from the caravan. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm taking the all the like. Right, I guess so I'm gonna look through the desk. That's stuff real uh, quick. that's something you're gonna have to ask the rest of the party to hand over, like all that stuff to one person. Yeah, I'm just gonna hide it so no one will find them. Well, like, I'm specifically. No, no, no. I'm just imagining that somebody picks up Landron. Uh, just kind of flops around, gives a little shake, and then somebody else holds the bag, and the deeds are all falling out. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask if I could hold on to them because I'm gonna put them uh, somewhere where I don't think people are gonna get. You know, let's be real. You're asking as a courtesy. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, only uh, no, but yes. <laughs> Alright, so does the rest of the party consent to him uh, taking those? Or? I guess I'll, yeah, I'll tell I mean, you where it, I put them. Okay. I mean, yeah, you know, if he feels he can hide them best, I'm I'm all for that. Alrighty. Uh, so, he has all, all of those, so you're all ready to head back to the caravan. Mm-hmm. Alright. So, let me do the sheet. Eh. Hey, yes, I'm gonna specifically. I'm gonna let the part. I guess. Uh, oh. uh. I'm gonna tell y'all where I put them. I'm gonna y'all. put them in the. Yeah, I'm actually gonna put them in my quiver. Like, I'm gonna like put them like kind of like slide them up against like the sides of my quiver, and just like line the bottom kind of towards as. Okay. Just a few of them. All right, so you all return. So I can cast darkness too. All right. That's dope. So, nice. Let me... all right. so uh, when you guys re, uh, so as you guys travel, at you before you even get to the camp, as you're just uh, wor- working your way through the the fauna and the shrubbery of the forest, before you even get there, you start to hear a. Uh, a little bit of an arguing tone. Uh, you can hear a deep, uh, booming voice that you uh, recognize to be Boric Halfheart, the dwarf who hired you guys to guard the game. And he's he's getting kind of loud, getting kind of rambunctious. Um, he clearly he's dressing down somebody. Uh, and as you guys move through the shrubbery and into the can- encampment, the first thing you see is said. Uh, actually, I have a dwarf model, so I don't even. So you see him just. Yelling at uh, both uh, Nova, uh, Nova Rin, the uh, dragonborn uh, weapon, uh, weapons and armor merchant that you met initially, uh, the one who didn't, uh, who, the one who had a bit of a bit of a distaste for Landrin. Uh, it was also pretty suspicious of you guys, but as she explained, uh, it's mostly her suspicion and in, in hostility stemmed from the fact that they had been mistreated and. Treat, had been mistreated and been uh, more or less used by a lot of people they had encountered since entering the nation of Nordrin. Uh, and the other is the half elf uh, spice merchant Argo del Corvo. He's he was kind enough to give me some breathing room. Yeah, he's he's more of the he's kind of where where Nova's like the the high energy assertive type. He's more reserved and calm. Basically, if you were to imagine them in like negotiation scenarios. She would be the aggressive negotiator, ne- negotiator, using every advantage she possibly can, and being like, "This is how this is going to go." She'd still be effective in her own right, but she's not the diplomat. She's the, uh, she's the what's the term? She's the aggressive type, not like host- like evil, like like I'm going to attack you, but like I'm bold, I'm assertive, and I know where I'm coming from, and you can't push me down. You can't like you can't pull the wool over my eyes, type. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, Argo is a, a, a lot more, not reserved, but a lot calmer, a lot more uh, relaxed. He's uh, he's not a softy, though. He's not like you can 
manipulate him or anything. In fact, he's just a cool, collected diplomat kind of kind of guy. Yeah, he was the one that if you were to go to his shop, he would be like calm and nice. And even if he saw you shoplift, he would kindly grab you by the shoulder and simply ask you to return the item. No, no hostility, no threat of the guards. Just please return the item. That kind of way that makes you feel really guilty about it. Yeah, he's he's a respectable type. More charismatic. Don't like this guy already. (laughs) So, and of course, uh, you don't know much about Bor Kafar because after he hired you all, he really kind of just disappeared uh, at the head of the caravan, and then he, when the encampment stopped, he quickly rushed on ahead to scout out the road on his own. From what you have been able to derive from your first encounter with him, though, he's he's uh, charismatic in his own sense, but not, like, charming. More like he's just high energy, kind of bold, and he's confident. And, you, and that confidence kind of bleeds out to anybody around him. He's, you know, he's more or less, he gives, like, that that, that warm uncle kind of feel. Uh, like, oh, ho, 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 how are you, lad? Good to see you. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, but he, he can, uh, you can sense that he's also really tough. This guy, from the scars on his face a little bit, he's got one gash along his cheek. You can tell that this guy's been through his fair share in life. He's probably a good, uh, 60, maybe 70 years old. He's, 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 he you only's know, getting on in years. Uh, obviously for a dwarf, that's not super old, but, uh... Landry would like to hands. waddle his happy, teen little butt up to the assembled merchants and kind of proudly do that uh, superhero hands on the hip pose. Like we've returned with the stolen goods. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right. So you approach and you know, and he's like, and uh, like I said before, as you guys heard, as you were coming along, uh, Boric is just in the middle of yelling at both Argo and Nova. He's just laying in. Nova looks like at any minute she wants to chop, like just take her, her dragon snout and chomp the guy's head off. She's pissed. But uh, Argo, on the other hand, has just got this like flat, even smile. Like he's listening, he's paying attention, he's pretending to take it all in. But in reality, you can, you know, you could just tell just from your brief interactions with the man. He's more or less just waiting until Bora calms down to then dress him down in a calm, kind of disappointed parent kind of way. So that's how this is going. So once uh, you land, you're like. Put your, uh, your, you know, your fists on your hip, and you're like, "We have returned with the stolen goods." But Bork totally is just ghosting on your presence. He is, he is in the middle. He is so fucking pissed. Now, and you could tell just from uh, the the words that he's saying that it's about so many different things. It, <clears throat> he's like, "How could you let a bunch of stupid little goblins steal our goods, steal our our papers? How how could you do this?" You, this you encampment is full of people. How could you do this? Going over during this massive rant and just kind of tugging on his shoulder, sir. Sir, 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 sir. sir? sir? Mm. He doesn't seem to be paying attention to me, sir. Uh, and- um, I cast thaumaturgy and yell silence, and everything shakes around us. <laughs> uh, all right. So when you cast thaumaturgy and everything shakes and you yell silence. Uh, this is the first thing that finally snaps Boric out of this seeming blind rage. Uh, he doesn't calm down immediately. He's still got that lint in his eye. Like, he's he's still pissed. But now he's, you know, he's starting to perceive things around him more realistically. He's starting to take a deep breath. You shocked him out of that, that little rage. The moment you cast a thaumaturgy, Lan just jumped up, and he's, like, somewhere on Nova's, like, arm, just quivering, like, Ugh. So I, I I hear that you are angry that a bunch of goblins stole some of your equipment. Um, for the record, these goblins were of the elite variety. Uh, they were highly intelligent. Elite uh, goblins. They what they were doing. What are? So, what have you been smoking, lad? Oh, is that really how you want to? treat your saviors that have brought back all of your items if that's the case we'll keep them uh but and, and you know. before before you even continue nova like slaps uh not like actually slaps him but more or less bumps uh past Bork as if he's chopped liver it's like you got the goods back we did uh, ma'am could you yeah. help me down by the My way limbs are I, I i don't think i described her height correctly last time uh she's six foot three she's she's very tall. In that- 
In that case, he's probably only probably somewhere like on a wrist. Then, like, okay. ma'am, could you please get me off? Yeah, uh, no, my she's limbs are in a death grip. Um, oh. I would like. To, uh, I require a manifest of all of the items that were taken, so that we can return said items to you. Um, we did find a lot of other things there while we were there, uh, and we are going to keep that as uh, spoils of victory. So once you provide to us the manifest of all items that were taken, we will make sure that we get them returned to you. Right. And uh, Nova kind of puts her hands on her hips, and in you know, being a dragonborn, you can't really see the facial expressions as well. But from what you can tell from how her lip curls up, she's smiling. Like she, she kind of, she kind of sees the the almost contractual, like this is our payment. This is she's more comfortable with you guys when you're speaking like that, when it's like business talk, because when it comes to socially, she's not inept, but she's not as comfortable talking, you know, like, you know, how is you, how is your day? You know, like, you know, what do you like to do in the afternoon? What are your hobbies? She's, that's not like where she's comfortable, but the moment she feels like something's a business, like this is the contract, this is the parameters. This, you feel like, you know, just from how you talk to her, that alone made her comfort. But the reason she's smiling is she does like, uh, she finds the way you handled that. The My way horns? You... Yes, I know. <laughs> she. <laughs> the... I'm just gonna up here, Nova. Could you please help me down? No. The ba- oh, okay. Well, you jumped on her, so. Limbs in a death grip. Okay. Uh, she shakes you off. Not okay. not as aggressively as you would have guessed she would have back when you first met her. Almost gently, like she kind of sees you as a kid now. So she, you know, she kind of puts you down. Uh, I mean, he's a kobold, and he's a young kobold, so that's uh, that's not an overly uh, optimistic estimate. Yeah. <clears throat> she went. Uh, so once she uh, lets you uh, lets you down, she then addresses you and goes, "That seems like a a, f- a fair request. V- feel free to keep any a- anything you found. Although we are supposed to acquire some papers, I'm not sure what they are. Boric hasn't told us all e- everything uh, in terms of what we're setting up when we get there." I'm assuming we're setting up uh, line shops or something. Uh, basically little uh, huts right outside town to sell things to. But whatever the case, uh, what are, if you found any papers, contractual uh, papers such as those, please turn those over. But otherwise, the spoils are yours. That includes some of the gold that was stolen. Though it did hurt oh, some of I, our bottom I, lines, I, we, we perfectly understand that the payment is necessary. So I turn to my party... Um, we didn't find any papers, right, guys? Um, I there was a lot of stuff that burned up in the in the the tree mill that we didn't get a chance to uh, get back. So, right. so when when I'm you say sure. that, when you say guys, when you describe, guys, just, oh, fuck, right, when you describe that these papers are burnt up, uh, Nova's face is not the one of anger or anything. She kind of just slumps down. She's like, "Oh, that's disappointing," but she, you clearly could tell just from that, uh, at least what she's. Perceive what she's outwardly expressing herself. She's not visibly upset or like distraught at the loss of the papers. She seems to genuinely, at least as she's expressing, not uh, not understand what the papers were. Uh, so, same from Argo. Just, Argo just also clear. has no clear upset response. However, Boric, okay, so I, I just the want mom- my intention to be clear though okay. that I didn't say the papers burned up. I implied. That they might have been burned up. I know that's how they're taking it. Uh, okay. Argo likewise is calm. He's cool. He's collected. He seems to is again. He's he's more in control of himself as a whole. So this could be an act. This could be reality. But he seems to also not have any visible response to having you suggested that the papers burned. Boric, on the other hand, comes back with that fury that he had just a moment ago. That he is he begins moving forward. He is prepared to dress you guys down hard. He is pissed. Landrin would like to gently tug uh, Z- Z- Zoe. I can't say her name. Nova? No, yeah, thank you. Would like to tug Nova's uh, pant leg or whatever. and kind of It's gesture a robe, to so the- kind of like a skirt. Okay, gonna tug her robe and kind of gesture. Could we speak in private about this? Uh, she, she hears you and she, she nods. And uh, she follows you. Where would you like her to go? Uh, I'd say behind. Let me recheck my map real quick. I'd say to the uh, cart on the. I believe it's northeast for you. Right. The one behind the fire. 
All right, so you want to go over here? Yeah, behind the cart, next to the fire. So it just kind of looks like we're having a fireside chat. All right, so you guys move over to the fire. The fire is, uh, because it's almost morning, the sun's starting to go up, the fire is actually being allowed to kind of settle in its final embers. It's not in a full flame anymore. But it's a brief little light due to the the still burning cinders. Excellent. Uh, Let's let the party get its main interaction out of the way before we do this. All right. Uh, so Argo and Borak are right there. Again, Argo's still cool. He's collected, but, and you can tell, like, he's looking at Borak, like, he's about ready to, to try and, like, cut him off and find a way to pull him away until he calms down. Because though Argo is generally, like I said, he's, he's a diplomat, he's charismatic, he likes to, he's calm, cool, and collected. Borak is just giving so much shit that Argo's almost fed up with it. But uh, Bork initially lays into you guys. He's like, how could you let those papers burn? They were more impor- important than anything else you could have returned to us. You, you could have allowed all the weapons to be stolen, all the armor. But those papers are the most important thing. How could you fail? So I, I understand your anger. However, how are we supposed to know what is important and what is not. We were not provided any clear information when we were requested to go and get the items that were stolen. You are laying blame wherever you feel is best because you failed as a leader to properly protect your supply. That's not my fault. What I did for you was try and bring back everything so that we could do what we were paid to do. So why are you yelling at me? Please explain that to me. And I would like to try and do a persuasion to calm him down. All right. Roll a persuasion with disadvantage. Um, I would actually in one like, of those rages. I would actually like to assist on this. All right. Because uh, it's an iron. I'm going to play back ex- the exact words that they told us to go get, which had nothing to do with papers. Okay. It so... was just about stolen equipment. Okay, so did you roll? Or? Yeah, uh, I rolled a nine on both, so, you know. Yeah, that, that doesn't work. He's still pissed. Like he, uh, So he hears your words, but you can tell he's kind of more or less ignoring the, the general actual verbiage. He, he gets the essential uh, message you're trying to cross, and he's insulted by it. He's like, <clears throat> I hired you. I hired you. You do not dare question me and my decision-making unless you want to be out of a job. You want to travel these roads by yourself, so be it. We'll guard ourselves. Good luck. Good luck on the road. The road from here to Northholm is is two days. Two solid days. And you have no horseback, you have no proper lodgings, and the nearest town is in the opposite direction. So, if you wish wish to continue your journey with us, if you wish to be paid on time, you will not question me again. Now, those papers were important, and I should expect buffoons such as yourself to at least understand that. You don't need to know what's in those papers to know what's important. Gold you could find anywhere. Armor, weapons you can craft and find anywhere. But those papers represent something for every, for every single person in this caravan. That is more important than anything else. So I'll have you, I'll have you know I am just about ready to send all of you away. And before he can continue, Argo finally has this look on his face like, this is the first time you've seen like a twinge. Not of rage, but of like hate almost. Over Argo's face. He grabs Boric by the shoulder and wishes him around. And this is and th- this is incredibly surprising for you because as you understand and understood the hierarchy of this caravan, it's up to this point it's felt very much like Boric has been in control and that there isn't a lot of resistance to him. But it, it, again, this is a moment of just I'm done with you. <clears throat> I'll have you know, Boric. That you have treated our guests here. Yes, they're guests. You may have hired them to protect us. You may have hired them for a service, but you have no right to treat them this way. None at all. You are usually a respectable man, Boric. You are a warrior, a old adventurer. You have fought in two wars in your lifetime. I have never known a man I've respected more, and that is why I came on this caravan. Why I trusted you to lead us to a new land of opportunity. But... This attitude of yours, the way you've been acting since you received those letters the moment we crossed the border, it's, it's, 
It's odd, to say the least. And I am done listening to this. You will either explain to me right now, why are you so angry? Why have you lost your cool in this way? Or I am taking my, my oxen, my supplies, and I am going on my own route. And I will gladly hire these adventurers here to protect my caravan alone. And you, if you think I'll be going by myself, I'll have you know Nova is done with you as well. So make up your mind. Well, we're ready to be hired, so just let us know. And I'm going to, like, walk around and head towards the campfire. Um, but, like, just staying within earshot of the two that are there, but not making my presence known. Okay, so you're just going to make your way around, but make it look like you're walking away? Yeah, I would say. Um, I will follow. There's nothing I can say here. Or have. All right. And likewise, are you Austin and Belstarius? Mm, yeah. Okay. I better not interject because I would probably make things worse. All right. So you can visit before as you walk around, you visibly see like not only that tint of rage in Bork's eyes just disappear, you also it's almost like a one eighty occurs. There's a there's a long history between these two. It's very clear there's there's affection there as friends. They They've been through a lot together, and it's clear just from how Argo talked to Boric that they they have got had each other's backs. So for Boric, even in one of these rages, to hear his friend just with confidence say he's so done, he's willing to split from the caravan and go his own way. It's not unlike how you would have initially thought. It's not from he's not insulted. He's not angry. He's sad. Like, he, he feels sad all of a sudden. And he kind of slouches and leans against uh, this particular cart, and he's just silent. Like, the, he's got no words. And what you the last thing you can hear him mumble before he truly goes dead silent is, I'm sorry. And he just kind of hangs his head. Not quite in full shame, but more like embarrassment. Embarrassment from a dwarf is is deep shame from a human. Yep. Like, fuck. Uh, Argo can tell that he's not going to be able to get Bork to say anything for at least a few minutes. He's, he's, he's in that state of just... He went from this blind rage to now that he's coming down from it, he realizes how he acted and he's just, he's just distraught. So he's going to give him a minute. I will be back, my friend, in a few minutes. You need to make a decision, though. And I intend to get an answer about those papers that you freaked out about. I'd... Adventurers, can I perhaps join you by the fire? Sure. Right. So, uh, before so they, uh, before they all go back, though. Now, yeah. yeah. Before, before they all go back, Landrin, uh, you and Nova were having that conversation. I'd just like to say that I had a hunch about the integrity of Nova and our elven, half-elven friend, and I was on the money. I know people, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so he's just going to kind of hop onto a rock. It's bigger than him, so it, it takes a moment to kind of clamber up there like a dog. Okay. <laughs> Uh, please take a seat by the fire, um, uh, Madam Nova. All right. So um, she she takes a seat, but she, her she's still incredibly taller than you. Sitting down, she's still like four foot five off the ground. God damn it! You know what came to mind immediately as Lan looks over to that? Oh no, she's hot. Actually, yeah, would kobolds and, dra and dragonborn be a thing? Like, I've never thought of that. Yes, it's the fuck thing. Okay. Kobold <laughs> reptilian. She's hot. <laughs> what have I done? Okay, okay. Okay. Um, to be very blunt, uh, which is honestly the only thing I ever am, uh, no master orator am I, the, um... I will be very frank. You have struck me as a very straightforward member of this caravan and honest with what you think and what you say. They tend to match as far as what I've seen. So um, 
I have, from my observations during this time, surmised that you are here for the express purpose of traveling to the city and trading as an honest businesswoman. A very respectable uh, venture, I must say. But of course, that is what all of us merchants aim to, aim to do. Even Boric, though he's been acting odd lately. He's acting odd for a very good reason. You know the reason? Most of us have been speculating for weeks. I need you to be very calm, because I understand that you probably look upon him, at the very least, if not a friend, as a respected business associate. So I would ask you to reserve judgment until after he has had a moment to defend himself on the matter. Argo's the friend there. I only met Borg for the first time through Argo when we were doing a mutual meetup in a different land, towards the Southern Isles at the time. I agreed to come on this journey because I wanted a fresh start somewhere. But well, I if it makes have you... no love is lost between me and Boric. Well, if it makes you feel better, you've got a rather uh, profitable start ahead of you, as far as I understand it. Uh, a very good market for arms and armor, given the um, situation. Yes, we, uh, as Boric discussed with us previously... It would be a pretty good venture for my shop in particular. The local guard are looking for more suppliers for their armaments. Uh, <clears throat> though, as far as I'm aware, there's no rebellion or anything. It's mostly just preparing for defenses against foreign entities. At least that's been my understanding. The presumption in the... Ad, please don't scream. In the letters, my associate decided he wanted to open up addressed to our dear Dwarven associate uh, indicated that uh, everyone behind this venture, it, it behind as in monetarily, not actually embarking upon it like yourself, uh, is under the impression that their speculation upon any such uh, rebellion would be, um, how shall we say, helped along by providing concerned people's access to said arms and armor. I'm going to dumb this down very quickly for risk of being overheard. He wants to sell to both sides, and he wants there to be another side to sell to. What? And you see her, <laughs> her well, mostly round pupils go f from round pupils to like the, that slit, that lizard slit. Like she, her, her eyes pierced up and you can kind of, she kind of, she kind of, when she said what her, her jaw, like her teeth really like seem to really shine through that, that bit of rage. She, she's, she's pissed now, but you can okay, tell Lan she, looks she's, like she's trying not to, trying yeah. not to run away from her in terror right now. Yeah, you can like, tell she she's off, looking off, she off, she's off, she, she's resisting going full rage because you did ask her to to be calm and she's trying to she's also trying to make up a little bit for how she initially treated you. So she's trying not to go all out but it's really taking a lot of self-control not to whip around, rip through the 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 caravan uh, the uh the uh cart uh trying to rip through that and run right at boric and beat him like she's she's pissed so you're telling what proof of this do you have that, that boric intends to if not supply a current rebellion start one now i would like to just clarify here the the way the letter was worded i i think he isn't hoping for it i think is uh what uh he's going to press the digitation the seal up in front of her so he as she can see it uh the um uh, the seal on the letter indicated that he doesn't so much want it as he is being coerced into it if, if you ask me i think he's a uh, upstanding well, keep in mind the seal is, keep in mind the seal is mm -hmm. gone it's a rune uh it's a rune that uh, means deceiver in dwarvish which she does speak yeah. So anyway, she, so he, he, she's, he's just going to explain that, um, yeah, the, though, uh, yes, a, a small point of note, uh, at the current juncture, if you all, if we have all the deeds, by the way, if we went along, mm -hmm. handed over all deeds. the documentation, uh, uh, yes, you already have lands. The what? Orchid. How did, how did he achieve deeds? 
I, I believe he has noble backing from the Southern Islands. The Southern I Oh no. Oh yes. She, she has this she has this look uh, again dragonborns and how their facial structure is. You could tell, though, being a kobold yourself, uh, being a kobold with an elongated snout, you know, you know, you can recognize better than anybody else the facial expressions that are more subtle on a more a dragon originated race, and you see like this this look of of recognition or realization, and it's not now she went from angry to now she's almost fearful. I I will be honest with you. I feel that if you and Argo had a genuine sit down with him, the the lot of this caravan could go into town and run a very honest business. You already have all the setup entailed. You can just go in and simply do as you and Argo intended to do: be honest, upstanding business uh, people, and that would cut off the entire thing at the head. <laughs> I don't know if it's that easy. All of our contacts into this country were established by Boric. If, though we are, can easily back out, and we would, it'd be an uphill battle to establish ourselves in any of the cities. But damn it, I'd rather do that than start a damned rebellion for that stupid midget dwarf. And she kind of stands up now full height. And again, her I eyes are like still in that slit. Like, she's like, yeah. Mm. I'd just like to say that I'm quite pleased that despite our rocky start, I had the good sense to trust you with this information, Nova. I do owe you an apology for that. I Oh, none at all. My race has not exactly endeared itself to anyone. Well, it's my particular history with kobolds. Uh, when I was young, uh, we were trying to set up camp, me and my family. I've always been a traveling merchant. But... We tried to set up camp, there was a storm, and we went into a cave. We were attacked by kobolds. A lot of them, too. I... I lost my father to them, and I can't say that I've... I've treated you fairly, uh, based on my scars from my past. I, I apologize for that. He's going to open his little arms for an apology hug. She, she hugs you back. Oh, this is quite nice. I don't get a lot of hugs. I don't get a so lot of affection. Huh? What well, now? Like during the hug, we we come around the corner and they're hugging, and we're yep, like, "What the fuck just thing. happened?" <laughs> Put it on a shirt. <laughs> Wait before. Um, right before what? Before I come around the corner, whenever uh, the dwarf and the other guy went into the wagon by themselves, right? To talk. Um. No. Uh. He. They. Uh. Boric. Uh, is still leaning against this uh, carriage, kind of <laughs> still looking sullen. Like, he's he's kind of just lost his way a little bit, and he's not sure what to say or do. And Argo's <laughs> following following you guys to the fire. Oh, we can show him all the deeds, and Argo's gonna have this guy by the balls. Probably. Gotcha. Oh, come on, let's do this. We've got him by the balls. We took advantage of this opportunity. Yeah, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to fill Argo in first, though. All right, so y'all get around the fire. Putting Argo and nope. Nova. What is your father like? <clears throat> uh, you saying this before everybody gets around the circle, or as, yes. like as it's happening? Um, well, he was a strong, bold man. He never liked trading in weapons like I do now. He'd probably get on my case about that. We were at the time spice traders. He wasn't much of a warrior or a fighter. I guess I've made up for that in a lot of ways. But he was a kind, gentle soul. I, even when we were attacked by kobolds, he tried to reason with them. It didn't exactly work. <sighs> he doesn't so. sound... He sounds the polar opposite of mine. Like, t small... Uh, not particularly small, but a little gangly for a human. But very... He, he did enjoy him some fireballs. Oh, goodness me. Well, I'm sure you loved your father as much as I did mine. And though they may have been different, I'm sure yours raised you right, considering. Well, he raised me in the human fashion, and it worked out pretty well. 
Well, let me rephrase that. He raised me in the human fashion when he realized I wasn't an animal. I see. Oh, it's a very fascinating story. You see, he purchased my egg on accident, attempting to inquire alchemy reagent, and he just starts going into this long little backstory story to her, and that's about when the rest of the party gets in. Okay. I will say she was listening intently to your story, though. And that's why I'm partially purple on uh, certain sections of my scale color. It's alchemical burns. Oh, my. Oh, yes. Uh, they're incredibly permanent. I suspect a regeneration spell might do something about it, but I've never known a cleric uh, uh, powerful enough in the divine arts to uh, be willing to give that a go. I'm sorry. Oh, so. I'm sorry. I don't know any clerics myself. Certainly none that powerful. Neither do I. <laughs> this is delightful. I will say, if I ever hear of one, I'll send. I'll make sure to send them your way if I know where you are at the time. Well, we still no, appear before, to be traveling in the same direction. Before Boric decomposes himself, maybe we should get yeah. down to brass tacks. Are you saying that in character, by the way, or in meta? Or both. Yes. Yeah. In All character. Right. right. And Nova, uh, and Nova hears this, and she's like, "Oh, okay, right." Because she was genuinely engaged with uh, with Landry, and she was uh, kind of fascinated a little bit to learn his story. Uh, <clears throat> so she gets up, and she kind of moves uh, right next to uh, Ar uh, Argo. So the both of them are facing the four of you across the fire uh, or the embers, and uh, you guys, I assume, explain uh, the deeds. Or do you want to play, yeah, that, play that out? Yeah. Um, I think okay, uh, I got the high charisma. I don't know if you guys want me to be face of the party, but like I'll I, do I, the talking I, if you want me to do the talking. Uh, um, <laughs> Kiko's going to look over at, uh, at Landry real quick. Sunshine? Sunshine? Uh, did he say sunshine? Sunshine. 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 He's just going to nod sagely. Gonna, I have no idea what he's talking about. Cool. Gonna, uh, that means Kiko's going to reach down and pull out uh, some of the deeds and letters. Sunshine! Oh, the light of day. Oh, very good, Kiko. I appreciate the turn of phrase. All right. And Kiko's going to hand them over to uh, Landra. All documents. Uh, as so, I alluded to earlier, Nova, as you can see here, um, uh, here's the letter, by the way. Uh, I tried to use a mending spell to uh, try and put Pandora's box back, its contents back in, but there's no closing that lid. The rune popped up and immediately disavowed me as a liar. Uh, so Very when, clever little thing. When you explain that Nova has doesn't have a look of recognition on her face, she definitely took in your words and she understood what you're saying. But the one, uh, but as Argo hears it, he has a look on his face, like, "Oh, I know where that's from." Like, yeah, he has a definite look of recognition. I recognize this use. Uh, this particular type of seal is popular in the Southern Isles. Uh, unfortunately, it's not used by any savory characters. I'm. I'd have to say that the person I think who sent this letter, I don't know his name, but his title. His name is Khan Ra. He's uh, a well-known... Prick. He deals in the ware... Let's just say he deals in wares that aren't quite... His. Aren't, aren't his, and certainly aren't savory items really? either. Nor are they necessarily just items. Oftentimes they could be people. You could just call him a rotten, sturdy scoundrel criminal. <clears throat> There's a lot of beating around the bush going on here. He's, well, he's a Still slave. Out. I've only worked with the worked with an associate of his once uh, on an official, mind you, an official task and salesman. But I, they tried to bring me and a few other merchants in the Southern Isles into the fold. More and more people to act as slavers and slave sellers and the sorts. I had no taste for the business. Though I may have been raised in the Southern Isles myself, I never quite liked the slave trade or the slave gladiatory rings. I never quite liked it. That's why I left as soon as I could. But it, it, I cannot believe that Boric would work with this man. 
it, it just doesn't make sense. The, the two of them, as far as I knew, never encountered one another, even while Boric was with me in the Southern Isles. We only ever did legitimate business. It wasn't till we were tired of, well, the local guard harassing us, as well as uh, other unsavory folks taking advantage of us and others in the area that we finally decided to make way to Nordred. As far away from the Southern Isles as you could possibly get in this world. But I... I can't imagine what exactly their plans are. You said you found deeds, did you say? Uh, yes, uh, the proper documentation has already been uh, processed and purchased as to ensure you will have land to begin your shops in earnest uh, to speed up the process and make sure that uh, the arms and armor can begin manufacturing and sale as soon as possible. Could I see a sample of one of these deeds? You can see the whole lot of you, so wish Kiko, my dear friend, thank you for handing these back over, and he will start uh, showing him some of the ones. Right. In uh, question? Uh, Argo and Nova are kind of looking over them, and Nova sees the one with her name and her shop on it. This, this is for you, by the way. This is a shop in Northholm. And not just any, not just the, the basic residential district, this is a shop in the, in, in the higher districts. With nobility, Ooh, they, had, they had a great deal of trust in your abilities. But I don't understand. Why would Boric or or the Khan purchase these? I, I don't understand. Argo. So it is secret. under our interpretation, off of reading the letter, that they wish to sow hate and discontent um, within the current lineage. Uh, in the 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 power struggle um, for the the throne as of this moment in time. So whether they are looking to oust, um, I forget his name. I think it was Leonidas. Um, <laughs> no, uh, the name Leonidas, Lionel. Uh, Lionel. Last name okay. is Lionel. First name Rolo. Okay, so if they are trying to oust Rolo uh, and bring about a new power and or uh, wait behind and try and figure something else out. Um, having you in high nobility to sway um, noble opinions about where and who you sell arms and equipment to, um, that could be the ultimate play here. Mm. But I can't understand why I would get the upper districts with nobility, but Argo, who's... Well, if I'm being honest with myself, more of the diplomat of the two of us, why he would be the one in the residential districts of the city. And Argo actually holds up uh, his deed and, and points it out as well. I'd have to agree. Though, if I had to speculate, Nova, I'd say it's because of your rambunctious nature that the nobles would take more notice, at, at the very least, of your statements and your opinions on the topics. Perhaps that's why. And you kind of, she kind of like leans back, and she's kind of, she's kind of like uh, scratching her horn, like one of her horns in her head, uh, kind of like in the same way like a person would scratch the side of their head when they're confused. Um, uh, Kiko would like to peep up uh, at this point, and uh, Kiko's gonna say, uh, "All right." Oops, sorry about that, but uh. Kiko's going to ask, or like, kind of like, put forward the idea of hidden in plain sight, perhaps. It's a front. Like, a business in a high-end district might just be a front for other unsavory things. But how could it be a front when I myself am opposed to things like this? Wouldn't Boric have to get me involved in this unsavory business? Um, and by your reaction, I'd say that's not a sensible idea or or sane one. Actually, I'm surprised he still has a face. I wow. would very much like to rip him limb from limb, but at the same time, I also wanted to respect each of you bringing us this evidence first. I so wish to thank you for that again. Just, just for the sake of argument, um, you have a deed with your name on it in the Noble District. Isn't that more than enough to try and sway you to his cause? Given the fact, if you weren't aware of the conversations that were having, happening now, 
wouldn't that be more than enough to usually sway someone to potentially look the other way for certain business dealings? Huh. You did I don't part- like living amongst snobbish nobles. I like to run a fair business. I like to sell my wares. Yes, they may be weapons and armor, but I don't have any desire to live amongst nobility. Though, yes, when I was a child, I may have wanted to, especially living in the Southern Isles. I never found it a life as I've gotten older and actually spoken with such nobles, seen the way they live. It's not a life I'd ever find attractive. But as well, I said, I Boric and I are not... Understand that. As I said, though, Boric and I are not bedfellows. He only met me a little while back. Perhaps he believed I was easily persuaded by such frivolous things. I don't know. And this is where uh, Argo kind of slips in a little bit. Well, I did tell him about your personality and about your tastes, but it is quite possible he did think that nobility was an attra- a noble living was an attractive a commodity to you. And if not to you, then anybody else. It does also need to be saying that I don't think Boric is the one who has, who acquired these deeds. The signa- I did mention that. The signature on all of these is not that of Boric. Uh, I recognize his handwriting anywhere. And the signature that signed off as the re- recipient, or the one who at the very least paid for these deeds and their proper inherent properties, the signatures actually on three of them are different from each other. But none of them are Borix. I would have to say it's more than likely either a confidant or the Khan himself. But I cannot say at all. I've never seen the Khan's writing. He's very... Insular. Elusive? Elusive, insular. We most Only a set number of people have ever Jinx. seen the man. Jinx, my friend. Jinx. I'm not buying you a Coke. You don't have to, it's on me. Alright, cool. Uh, We also must consider the possibility that um, some of these were acquired locally. What do you mean? There are elements... There is a lot of instability around here. It's not beyond the realm of possibility that someone with means here got these here. Of Uh, course, I am speculating. And as this is being said, all of a sudden Nova stands at her full height, and she also aggressively walks around the carriage, grabs Boric, and drags his ass back. Oh, no. Welcome back to the conversation, Bork. Your presence was uh, not greatly missed due to your original behavior. I, 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 I cannot <laughs> stress the aggression here. She is holding his whole head with her, not by a hair, head with her hand and dragging him. And he is resisting to no avail. Amazing. And she tosses him right in front of the fire. Intentionally, just short of him actually falling into the fire. And she doesn't say a word to him, just uh, takes her place by Argo. Argo, on the other hand, Boric, we're done waiting for you to recompose yourself. It's time you start answering some questions. Uncomfortable questions, I might add. Um, Looms none too menacingly. None too menacingly at all. Boric kind of uh, sits up on one of the stones around the fire, and he's you know he's kind of clutching his head. There's there's some blood trickling down where uh, Nova's claws kind of dug into his scalp. One could one one would say it was possible it was done by accident, but if you were to ask her or look at her, I don't think you would come away with a conclusion it was an accident. So that doesn't surprise me. So I believe it. Yeah. So Bork sits up and he's got this look on his face like, oh shit. Um <clears throat> uh, Well, what is it you want to know? She Landron is just going to kind of hold up the letter and do that tapping thing with the back of his hand. That very specific tapping thing, like hitting a piece of paper, like tap, 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 tap. The letter. I, 
I didn't get a chance to read it. I, I don't know what's in it. Oh, well, would you like me to read it aloud for you, my friend? In fact, I shall let you do it, and he's just going to hand him the letter. If you try and burn that, I'm going to burn you. So, uh, he reads it aloud, as I told you guys the letter's contents before. Uh, and he reads the, you know, he reads the end of it. He's like, that name, it's a pseudonym for the Khan. It's one of his cover names. You were right, Argo. I, Argo says, why would you work with the Khan? One of the most evil people I've ever had the pleasure of knowing, just simply by reputation. He's a, he's a lover of slaves. He enjoys slave craft. You know how many slave merchants I've met in my life? Many while living in the Southern Islands. And most of them actually didn't love the line. They didn't love torturing these poor souls who had been labeled property. He was one of the few that truly relished it. The ability to control and manipulate people, as he's done you, Boric. You don't understand. He's bought us deeds. He's bought us land here. In order to fresh start, like I promised. Fresh start. They've gone start. well past understanding. We've walked them through the entirety of this matter already. Fresh start? Nova gets, again, eyes slits yet again. Stands up, and she's full on baring her teeth. She looks very feral at this moment. Fresh start? Fresh start, my ass. You wanted to start a rebellion for this scum and drag us into it. And what? Try and bribe us with nobility? Try and bar hey, bribe us and living some grandiose life all so we could sell our souls for you and to this con? And she's like really getting... She's she getting ready to pounce over the fire and beat his We're ass. We're about the doom music is about to start playing. Yeah, this is when Argo puts his hand, uh, you know, right in front of her, and she, you, you can, her eyes slowly move towards Argo, and you can tell she's weighing out whether she wants to cross Argo by attacking, and she also is weighing also her level of respect for Argo in this case to calm down enough to back the, off. There's also the party of adventurers that might interfere. Yes. So you can kind of see I mean, her I won't. her force of guys going to get what's coming to him. Sit sit down. Oh jeez. Landron's going to get freaking bowled over trying to give due trial to this asshole. Uh oh, as, as for me, if I could eat, I'd be eating popcorn right now. Uh at this point Argo also ste- uh steps in metaphorically speaking. Well, obviously he's not stepping in, but he says, um, Oric, be come clean. How much of this do you know of? What do you know, exactly, before having read that letter? Uh, I knew we'd been given deeds to live here, and I knew we were going to be supplying weapons. But I wasn't told we were starting the rebellion. I was told we were just supplying them. We were taking advantage of the unrest. It was good money. It was going to be a good deal. I don't know anything else, I swear. I didn't even... I... I don't know. I have a cut In the immortal words of Corporal Baldrick, I have a cunning plan. Please tell me some of you have watched Blackadder. I have not. Nope. Nope. You all wound me. Okay, that's your homework for Sunday. Uh, get a hold of Blackadder or Blackadder Goes Forth and enjoy yourself with some British comedy before it was outlawed. But I'm Tish. But you. Alright, so. I. I would like to, um, shall we say, propose a th- there is a third option, cock shotgun. You all have all the cards at present. You have the deeds, you have the writing, you have the proof. You have the um, dubious confidence of this southern, shall I say, 
deplorable fuckwit, if you'll excuse my uh, northern. In uh, in a bit of a, in the moment you say that they're the only, or they have all the cards, Boric kind of looks to the side. Oh dear! Yes, I uh, you you you've thrown a wrench into my cunning plan to let you three come out on top of this. Who else? Something you wish to share? Uh, uh, Argo kind of. Oh, you say that like he has a say in the matter. Argo kind of gives him this look. I, I'm not the only one the con has asked to do this. Then you have more cards to play here in this cunning plan of mine. I, I don't know who else. I just know there are others. That he warned me that if. If I failed, there were many others already in Nordred, a- actively, not only selling weapons, I don't know to who, or to what groups, or to, to what motivation. And again, I didn't know we were starting the rebellion, I thought we were just playing the field. But there are already others here, we're just the last to arrive, the last to take advantage of Khan's offer. Mm-hmm. I will say that the wording I was told is that if it the worst were to come out of all the actions we're to perform here, the very least we'd rule the ashes. That's the exact wording. I'm still not sure how metaphoric it is, especially given events. It doesn't sound very metaphoric to me. In fact, it sounds ominously... Prophetic, given his like reputation. We, sounds like we have a problem. Uh, yeah, we have a... How shall I say this? You could, very easily, with all this documentation, head on up to the capital, and you could very easily, with the proper care, just making sure, given how readily this has all been acquired, there could very easily be up the chain of command, shall we say, um, roadblocks to getting this to the proper eyes that won't simply uh, burn them and have you all hanged. I propose that for the time being, the this caravan proceeds as if you were all acting under your original ideas of going into the capital and performing some honest business. And in the meantime, we, as a group, we, the four of us, uh, we hired hands, have a new goal. Uh, by the way, we real quick, going... uh, real quick, did you give, yeah. uh, did you give Boric only the letter, or did you give him also the envelope? Uh, the envelope, too. Uh, okay. Um, so as you're saying all this, Boric, you notice Boric's <laughs> hand begins to shake. Uh, um, you you worry me with your. Uh, you also it's the hand that's holding the it's holding the hand and the letter. You notice his hand is going gray, like a pale gray, and the co- the color is seeping taking it, as it taking works it out as well. Taking it out of his hand, it's the liar thing. The liar thing. Taking it out of his hand. And as after you take it out of his hand, unfortunately, as you do that, from the fingertips of his thumb and index finger, that symbol, uh, Deceiver, is now basically duplicating in thousands of little tattoos just appearing and fading onto his skin. So much so that from the tip of the, fin- the finger and the thumb, it's turning to turn solid black. And not, the color is now completely gone from him, and the black essence is moving its way up his arm slowly and you could tell it's causing him he's pain taking, he's taking the short sword and cutting his arm off at the elbow alright uh, somebody help me uh, what are you going to roll for that <laughs> uh, dexterity because it's a dex weapon alright uh, just, for... just a short sword attack alright um, roll with advantage you're not going to have to roll to hit because he's, he's idle so Roll, uh, just roll the damage. Okay, uh, let me put in, so it's a 1d6 plus 3. Alright. 
Eight uh, damage. Eight's high. Just shy of max. Eight's, eight's high enough, I'll say. So you successfully lop off his arm before the curse can make make it past the uh, the elbow. And he is now screaming in agony. Well, I'm so sorry. What have I done? I just wanted to have... Ah! Ah! Here, I'll do the other one, and you'll do amusing screams. Uh, uh, uh. Sometimes you just got to get an Ace Ventura joke when you're freaking out. Are you actually uh, gonna cut off his other arm? <laughs> no, I was making, I was doing a oh bit. Oh my goodness! By the way, uh, the arm that lopped off—that's now <laughs> solid black—is uh, n- now just kind of oozes into like a pasty liquid, and then kind of just okay, seeps uh, into the ground. Banditing um, the room, something. Right. I, I reach over, it, grab it, stuff, shove it in the fire to cauterize it. That's what I was trying to do. All right, so you. Uh, I reassure it. him in my very reassuring voice that I, that for a fee, I could easily replace his arm with a mechanical replica. All right, so I'm going to roll something real quick. Uh. So you car you successfully carterize the wound, but unfortunately you've caused him a lot more pain to the point where he's lost consciousness. Okay, we're we're going to put him on a cot. Where's his bedroll? Uh, you see uh, Igly and a couple other merchants in the caravan come around the corner, uh, confused. And uh, Nova they, looks at Igly. Look lantern with a bloody sword. Yeah, they they they're freaking out. But quickly, Argo calms them down and is trying to rear them in. But Nova looks at Igly and says, hey, "Get the medical cot. It's in the carriage. <clears throat> it's uh, most south near the road." So you see Igly run like, yeah, you know, like I said, he's a lot, he's a plumper kind of guy, but he's not like fat fat. So you know, he runs and he's kind of doing a, a very fast waddle. Lantern just screams at them all. I'm saving him from himself. Not helping. Uh, <laughs> so, hold on, let me, let me roll something for Argo. Okay, good. I, I would like to, um... Do I give him disadvantage from screaming like a madman with a bloody sword that's as tall as me? Yes. Excellent. Uh, Argo successfully calms down the crowd. Uh, you know, everybody, though he's not giving them all the details, he's, he's laying it out uh, pretty detailed. Uh, a couple of more merchants arise from the crowd, though. Uh, these are the first time you're meeting these ones in particular. Their names are uh, Angus Flint. He's an older human, about, uh, you'd say about 60, 65, something like that. Yeah, definitely. Does he, say, does he ever say Hoss? Uh, so, so let's see where we get the reference. Um, no. <laughs> you make me sad, though. You you made me really happy, but then you made me really sad. I know. Just wanted the name to be a reference, didn't need the personality to be. Uh, and the other merchant is uh, a kind of a kind of fairly sized dwarf as well, like Boric. Uh, but he's more. You, you can tell he's younger. Uh, probably. He's got a very short beard for a dwarf, but, uh, you know, <clears throat> he's got a tough. You don't know his name at all. You know Angus is because you've heard it mentioned a few times and you've heard his description, but uh, this uh, dwarf guy, you know, you don't know him. Nobody's referenced him. In fact, all you, you thought the only dwarf in the camp was uh, Orc. Master Dwarf, I have a few racial questions about the constitution of your people. Uh, do you regenerate? Dwarf, regenerate. Inauspic- inauspicious, uh, dear. Uh, I don't recall any dwarf ever regenerating. What has happened here? I chopped his cursed arm off. Cursed arm off? Uh, yes, it was threatening to throw across his entire body, so I stopped it. You attacked my cousin? You have my deepest apologies over the matter, especially because it was my fault it happened. I'm painfully honest without context when I'm scared. Uh, it's quickly at this point that uh, uh, you notice that uh, the dwarf is now kind of 
laughing a little bit. <laughs> uh, cutting a dwarf's arm off is nothing. We are hardy people. He'll shake it off. You've relieved a great deal of my stress, sir. Uh, it also helps I don't like Boric very much. He was someone I looked up to when I was a boy, but uh, he's lost a lot of respect since he became a merchant. He died. Hmm. I don't know if it would please you or cause further disdain if we elaborated on why he was cursed. Hmm. He kind of he kind of gives a look over to Nova and Argo. Uh, Nova Nova doesn't meet his gaze. She's just kind of ignoring him. Clearly, there's some uh, some beef between the two of them. Uh, and Argo kind of looks like he he kind of looks indifferent towards the dwarf, but he stands up and he goes, <clears throat> I'll have you know, no, Nogit, your brother has betrayed us. Cousin. I, sorry, I, did I say brother? Wow. I, I even wrote, said, I apologize. No, 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 no. I said, the word I said first was right. I don't know why I just said brother. I fucked that up. Uh, it's my own script too, so. Well, not script, but my own details. It even says cousin. I was reading, I was looking at that when I said brother, so. Well done, me. Uh, <clears throat> no get your... Yeah, everyone's a lot of brain for a moment. Uh, no get your cousin has betrayed us. What? How? Why? Not a very dwarven thing to do, I'm going to point out. Uh, Argo kind of pulls uh, Nogit aside uh, a moment. <laughs> kind of pulls him uh, aside, kind of uh, kind of around the corner, uh, while uh, Angus, the older gentleman, kind of enters the the circle here. So uh, I take it some exciting things have happened. So we heard about the goblin attack and robberies. Does this have something to do with it? We recovered some incriminating documentation amongst the recovered goods after... Uh, it's at this point Nova puts her hand crack. out to silence you. Like, just... Uh, and she looks at Ang Angus. We'll tell you when we know more. Yeah, Lance, Lance just gonna shut up. He trusts giant dragon lady. No need to be so distrusting there, lass. We've had our issues in the past. Issues. Issues. Since we've met, you've tried to bribe every single person around you for items of value, offering them little in return but lies. You've, you've attacked two patrols of rangers. Uh, not like full patrols, mind you, like two patrollies, like individuals. Uh, two, pa two patrols of rangers in order to, quote-unquote, protect our security on the road. There's a reason we hired proper security and didn't rely on your shady tactics, Angus. And keep in mind, this guy is an older gentleman. He does not give off the vibe as somebody who does those kinds of things. But you can also tell he's holding himself not in a way that one would consider natural. He's... This family has not impressed us. Uh, could I make an insight check on Angus to try and get a feel for his, um, like, current feeling? You know, is he anxious? Is he, you know, jumping between his feet? Is uh, he standing there calm, taking this? Sure, go ahead. Uh, take the roll. Seventeen. Uh, from what you can tell, Angus is, been, is almost entertained. Uh, he, you know, and he's fully aware of at least some of the details. He, he's fully aware that, uh, that you guys lopped off, uh, <clears throat> lopped off Boric's arm for a reason. He finds that alone entertaining. Um, you get the vibe that he's almost very, he's, he's, he's basically almost comes off like he expected something like this to happen, and he's smiling. Uh, well, he's got this calm look on his face that he clearly is uh, putting on this facade of of a concern or curiosity like, oh no, what happened? But at the same time, he's also he's got airs about him that is just off. Almost like he's, like I said, entertained, amused by the goings-on. Uh, 
just generally, I would guess shady is a good way to describe his overall aura. Let's stab him and be done with it. I still feel personally called out here. You're welcome. I'm dabbing as we speak. There, I did it both ways. What you gonna do about it? Do about what? Aggressively ignore you. Excellent. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna take Nova's lead and just kind of turn my nose up to this dude. Like, no thanks. Okay. Uh, any of you wish to interact with Angus or anything? Yes. Master uh, Master Flint, where did you acquire such a magnificent mustache? I didn't describe he had a mustache. He's his name's Angus Flint. If he doesn't have a mustache, you're dead for me. Okay, he does. I just didn't describe it. <laughs> what uh, did I tell you? Yeah. What did I tell you? Tropes are a thing. Sometimes they go. Uh, yeah, he has a. Do you guys know that like big, like bushy mustache? Not like a hand, not like handlebar, but like it's got like that that streak at the end. Not quite like the curl, like the cartoony curl, but like short of that. Uh, Teddy hey guys. Roosevelt. Imagine a really silvery. Yeah, I like that. Like imagine like a silvery white one because of his older age. I say I gotta head out. Oh, you gotta head out. Yeah, um, so y'all can keep like RPing and talking and stuff. I don't think Ginko has much to say right now. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna you know skulk around and eavesdrop. Uh, well, actually, we're not at a bad place to just press the pause uh, pause button because uh, you know, like I said, you're just about to like ask him questions and stuff like that. So we'll just stop right here if everyone's okay with it. All right, sounds good to me. All right, I'll keep note of where you guys are. All right. right. Talk with y'all. Talk with y'all next week. Yeah, I'll be honest. Yep. Um, I feel for Boric. Like he, the devil had reached out with the offer too tempting to say no to. Like, sometimes that kind of that kind of chance. Like sometimes you just can't say no to that shit. Trust so. me, I, I know the feeling with Otter Pops. Yep. Unfortunately, the devil can speak more a uh, more sensual tone than that of an angel. <laughs>